today? Oh, let me ask you a question that you had. Um, that, that last question. Now, when, well, because I had a murder case, right? And so, so they. Died? So he died? Oh, yeah. No, oh, well, yeah. Yeah, I told you. I well, well, people get shot all the time oh, and they don't yeah. always die. Well, no. yeah, this guy died. This guy died. Um, and so by me having a murder case, they classify me a little different. An investigator like myself, I go out and do the leg work and all this here. The DA gives me a video. I look at the video, attorney tells me, take notes, give me the video. So when I get in there, you got the whole family in the conference room. Grandma at the, at the chair, two or three cousins that went to jail. They doing jailhouse law, telling what he should get, what he shouldn't get. Yeah. And I don't believe he did it. So I put it up on the screen. And there he is. He comes right out the door and fires six rounds down the street and hit a man and kills him. They turn on me and tell me I'm a white man nigga. Yo, what's up, America? This your boy Pop, and we are back with another episode of Big Stick Energy. Big Stick Energy, first of all, is brought to you by Brock Brand. Go out and get your Brock Brand. Go to brockbrand.com and get your Brock Brand and uh, dress up, look fly, look nice with that. Also, we brought to you by Quad Houston. Quad Houston and the Den Cigar Lounge is located on 4608 Alameda. You come get some good food, drinks, good music, and a good stick. So, another week down, and we back at it right here with Big Stick Energy at the Den. And um, last week was the draft, man, and uh, Brady Ball, we, we, we stayed on here for three hours last week, bro. Like, we stayed on here for a long fucking time, man. Huh? Oh, three and a half fucking minutes we stayed on here. We stayed on here a long time, Brady. I damn near urinated on myself, you man. Did. Shit, man, I had to get up. It's, it's, uh, uh. I'm glad my I, bladder was fucking with I'm me. Glad I, I'm glad I wore my nigga. diaper. I'm glad I wore my diaper, dog. Oh, I had to hurry up, nigga. I'm talking about And then the seat down there. I had Earl Cambonese coming up out the seat. Oh, yeah, yeah. You Ooh, got nigga, my knee knocked up on me. I was walking, walking like Big Mama from church. You remember how Big Mama used to walk? <laughs> Sliding. <laughs> Sliding. Like, well, like. Down there peed on myself, nigga. You know how you get to the restroom when you you got to be, you know, we, we old, nigga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Start acting yeah. like your bladder yeah. work right now. You niggas in this motherfucker, let that bladder hit. Bam. Yeah. You gonna get up. Yeah. I don't give a damn. I done pulled over many a times on the freeway. Man, shit. Take a piss. But three hours, we was there three hours, yeah, doctor. three hours, a long time, man. We talked about a lot of football last Show week. Sure did. Had a lot going on. Yeah, it was fun. And uh, so, this week, man, uh, I made a special thing for this week. Now, I thought I had a couple of more guests, guests that was coming on, but the guests that I do have, I'm cool with. Because one of us, one of them I, I grew up with is, well, both of them I grew up with. One I grew up in the house with, which is my cousin, blood cousin. Okay. So, um. But y'all this, niggas wrote the same draws, nigga. Oh, like, like y'all ain't. Oh, that nigga. She, same when y'all was little, nigga, you ain't know your big mama and nobody said, y'all. I used to go to my cousin's house, nigga, and wear his shit, nigga. nigga, nigga. Come nigga, on, real nigga. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah nigga. Let me tell you something. My mama was trifling it sometimes, nigga. I'm it, it, real. Was, it was so bad, nigga. We bathed in the same bathroom. Oh, nigga. Act like y'all did, nigga. <laughs> Nope. That's how I was. <laughs> Caught the same whoopings, too. Caught the same whoopings, everything. Gee, that's a real nigga yeah. right there. So, but, but this week, man, this week is uh, it's, it's a little different. Yeah. Uh, I got I got my cousin on. I got my boy I grew up with. And uh, we're going to go around and we're going to talk about it. And, and talk. Just tell them who you are. If you got Instagram, tell them to follow you on Instagram if, you, if you, that's what you want. If not, just tell them who you are. And um, pretty much it. And... We just gonna go from there, and I got some more guests that's a part of this, that's um, that's here on the law side of. So my special guest, both of my special guests, but my special guest, which is my cousin and Jamil, they're on the other side of the law. They was on the other side of the law. Yeah, and other now. Side of the law. I got guys that's on this side of the law to help you get out of the bullshit. Yeah. Or to help you investigate your shit. But, Brady, tell them who you are. We're going to start from the top. Let's go. Man, you know what? It's, it's two things I ain't never seen. 
a turtle with speed and a, and a hole that I need. You dig? You hear me? Flat footed. <laughs> Ten toes down to the grind. You hear me, man? You know what I'm talking about? Flat footed pimping. You already know what it is, man. Comedian Brady Ball, man. I'm kicking, but not high. But my big mama say, long as you're kicking. That's what it is, man. So I'm here, man. Slow motion with it. Y'all already know what it is, man. We got some some dope guests in the building. Y'all, we finna crank this thing up. Let them know who you is, baby. My name is Lamont Haskett, Papa Big Cousin, A.K. Boogan. Sorry, you want to say that? No, I don't want to say that. All right. All right, my name's Jamel. You know what I'm saying? I grew up with these guys, you know, right down the street, round the corner. We've been walking to school together since goddamn, <laughs> um, <laughs> for what, first grade or something, probably, you know what I'm saying? And Jamil, yeah. not only that, your mama was our boy scout Oh, leader. don't forget, me and Papa was in the Cubs, scouts and shit together, man. Say, so we go back, you know what I'm saying? We go hot back. Dogs. Hey, all Put that eating hot dogs. dogs, hey man, we go back to walk, hey, we go way back, you know what I'm saying? So these guys know me right here, man, but, um, See, we all went to Cashmere together. We went to Concord, Key, and Cashmere from yes, start sir. to finish, you know? Yes, sir. And, and, um, and you know how life go, and you know where we're from. If you know Papa, we from right there on the borderline of hard time, right there off Cavalcade, in, in our, that's our area, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's the inner city now. It's looking nice. You know what I'm saying? It's looking real nice over there now, y'all. Hey, I'm telling you, regentrification is real. Y'all pay attention. But, um, man, we, I graduated from Cashmere in 1993. You know what I'm saying? I, I went to TSU right after I graduated from Cashmere. I got 96. I got about 96 accumulated hours, man. I ain't even. I ain't make it all the way. I got caught up. Um, cause as you said, I was on the other side of the law. <laughs> all right. You know so Jamil, we're gonna get to that. Let's go. That we're gonna get back to right, you. Let's go and let our next guest go and tell hey, you. Hey y'all, y'all know me. Keep it keep it cute and quick. Coco from Houston on IG and all social media platforms. Hey. And Coco did some time too. That's why she's sitting hey, up front. Hey, no, no, no. We're gonna Mind talk about business. that. We're gonna talk okay. about that, Coco. Hold on. We're gonna we're gonna talk about that. A little that. bit, just a little we're bit. We're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about it. <laughs> we got our guys in the back starting from right on back. Lee Van Richardson. I've uh, been practicing law a little over thirty years. Grew up in Prairie View, Texas. Went to UT Austin, where I met my man Joe, who I hadn't seen in about fifteen years. And uh, you know, if you want to follow me on Instagram, it's leadthelawyer.us. Cool. I'm Joe Herbert. I'm a criminal defense attorney, and I am not with the law. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> on the other side. I'm from Fifth Ward, Texas, Wheatley, class of 82. Not with the law. <laughs> Damn it, boy. And they go to law, right? The law about to talk right now. Damn it, boy. Uh, my name is Richard Cunningham. I'm not the law. I'm an investigator. <laughs> I will explain to you. But I also want to say something that's kind of that an attorney I worked for passed away yesterday, uh, Leonard Prince. I don't know, you. he came in here a couple of times and bought sticks. Uh, he had a stroke last Friday, and he went home yesterday. I just want to shout out to Leonard. So we, we, we're sorry for the loss. Uh, so about this show, so about this show, Brady. Yes, sir. Um, it's a couple of things I want to ask the guys up front, and then we're gonna everybody gonna get the time to talk about it. Uh, I'm gonna say this here about my cousin. Of course, I've been knowing him all my life, and we grew up in the same house together. My cousin was always the menace in the fucking <laughs> oh, neighborhood. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> True. He. <laughs> Hold on. Now. This nigga gonna get you in trouble every day. You run with it. <laughs> every day you run with him. He was going it was something he was gonna do that was mischievous in the hood. I mean, we got caught stealing at the store. Like our mamas told us, don't go to that bayou and play. We go down to the bayou play anyway. Like this, he kept me in shit all the time. Um, but you know, I, but he also told me as I got older, hey, you don't need to do this shit. I'm doing this here. You go this way. Don't go this way the way I'm going. Uh, my cousin was in and out of, 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 of prison, of course. That's why we're here. And Booger, what's the first, what was the first long stint you did 
and why and what happened uh, that got you there? Well, I can say my first stint, um, I think in 97, when, you know, me being who I am, I always try to do things the way I shouldn't do them. Because like he said, we grew up in a, in a household with my grandmother, his mama, my mama. We lost our one hour anus in 74. And so we grew up in a way that we were close, you know what I mean? Single parents and, and all this kind of stuff. But the long stint, I think the 13 I just did. But my first time in jail, I got caught at the house we grew up in, matter of fact. And they ran in my mama's house up and she was just coming home. Well, she wasn't at home. But I did from 13 year stint of and gave it all that crime, criminal activity. I was sentenced to 45 years. I didn't post to come home to 2032. But grace of God, I gave 30 years of it back on technicality. Damn. So, so being in there, man, uh, so when you got caught up, now you're in there. The, the, the mentality, the mentality of, of, of prison life, of course, is way different from just being regularly, regular life. Most well, certainly. How long did it take you to adapt? Well, you had to adapt real quick because they going to, me and Jamel did time with each other before. We did on a 95% of it was game affiliated. I stayed on game five, and you had, they going to pick out the prey. You know what I mean? And you had, I had to die real quick. Stay jail, I went to stay jail, wasn't but when I went to the penitentiary with people, it's gone, what, 20 years, 45 years, and all that kind of stuff. You had to die because if you didn't, you're going to get ate up, and they're going to take advantage of you. I was 20. Yeah, yeah, I was just curious. When you first went, how old were you? See, that's had to be. Uh, I was 19. No, I was 21 when I first went. And the crazy thing about it, I think we just lost our grandmas and our cousin. Yeah. Years before, because one died in 91. Grandma died in May 1791, and my cousin died. 92. 92, June 29, 1992. And not to just bring it up, popping on, I'm for the sake, but people in our family thought when he dies that I should have been the one because I was the the bad one. He was the quiet one. But um, I was 21 years old. I, I ain't never think that, but, you know, I guess people do think that way, that, you know, he was that that cousin and you was, you know, you was the one that I always got in trouble. <laughs> so, you know, I never thought that because I love my cousins, all of them. But before you go on, before we, we're going to come back to you, Booger. Jamil. God damn it, Jamil. <laughs> Let me tell you something about this guy. So we grew up in the same neighborhood, and Jamil was always a smart motherfucker. Like, when you in the top five percent of your class? No, nah, I wasn't in the top five. I wasn't in the top five. Man, but I was just always just just all right. You know, I don't man, know. Come on, man. Hey, man, it was just easy. You know, maybe I was just a little fast, but it was just seemed easy, you know what I'm saying? So so Jamil, let me ask you this sir. You did a long time. Yeah, I did a long time. I did a long time. A long time. I'm gonna let you explain everything that led up because I know your mom, you have a cool ass mama, man. Yeah. And I know she gave you and did everything for you. Yeah. And I know when you went in that hurt her, that oh, broke her heart. So explain to the audience what got you there. And talk about your sentence and how long did you do? All right, um, well, man, like say, man, I, I never, I, I wasn't, I was always had some sense. You know what I'm saying? I always had some sense. And so, you know, the things I did, I did because I really wanted to. Because I was just like, Booker, you know, we ran together. So I was just always up to something. You know what I'm saying? I was just always up to something. And we was just always up to something. You know what I'm saying? So one thing led to another. And I always wanted to meet some J's. 
You know, everybody wants some J's. So we we dibble and dabble in, in, in dope. You know what I'm saying? Just, you know, just deal with what kids do. You know, because we came up when crack started jumping. You know what I'm saying? That's when we was in middle school when the, when crack hit. And so we always played around, dibble and dabble, doing things we wasn't supposed to do, hanging at the store at Big G. You know what I'm saying? Just run, just doing stuff like that. And so we was just always up to something, which I really didn't have to be because I had sense, but I just didn't like paying attention. I just didn't like people telling me what to do, really. Yeah. I just wanted to do what I wanted to do. You know what I'm saying? As a, a young kid, I wasn't really into sports. You know what I'm saying? You know, because either you're going to have sports as an ambition or, or, or other things. I remember you played football, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so I wasn't really into sports, you know, but I was in the, I was in having fun. And boy, it wasn't nothing more fun than it. it wasn't nothing more fun than hanging out. You know what I'm saying? Book ass um, used to walk us to school and go the other way. <laughs> yeah, we know. Hey, this nigga would walk us to the school and go the other way. You know what I'm saying? We'll catch you out to school. He, he gonna hook back up after school. But um, and so after I graduated, like I say, school was pretty simple. After I graduated, I went to TSU, but I was still just hanging out. You know what I'm saying? I was still hanging out, hustling. Just shooting dice, I always shot dice. I always was just in the mix. You know what I'm saying? Cause that's what we did. And and you know, one thing just led to another. I always being in the mix, shooting dice, hustling. I sold a little, you know, I sold a little dope. You know what I'm saying? But that's what we was up to. You know what I mean? I'm I would say I'ma sell weed. You know, I used to sell the swishes when the swishes were popping, you know what I'm saying? Cause this was in the nineties. You know what I'm saying? So I was up to whatever was popping, you know what I'm saying? Cause I was, and I was hip. I paid attention to boys in the hood when they told us about the regentrification. You know what I'm saying? I was paying attention back then, cause I was always paying attention. Furious styles. Yeah, okay. I was paying attention. I always been kind of pro black. I always had the black fist, you know, cause I was always like that. I was that kind of guy in the neighborhood. I always, I had the black fist, cause the, I guess I was kind of raised like that. You know what I mean? And so I, I never paid, I never wanted to be told what to do. And so one thing led to another, I'm hanging out, I end up catching a case. You know what I'm saying? Right there in the neighborhood, end up catching a case, and they, I got 19 years for it. I got 19 years, but I didn't go to trial, because this was back in the 90s. They was giving out them football numbers. They, got, they giving out 75s, you know what I'm saying? They giving out, <laughs> man, they giving out some big numbers, man. You know what I'm saying? Houston? It was, hey, they was acting a fool. Um, 65, 75, 45. That, that was just the numbers that they was giving us. And they was messing over brothers like that. So I opted to, um, I signed for something. You know what I'm saying? I signed for something. I, I told them, hey, if you can give me anything under 20 years, I'll take it. This is what I told um, my lawyer. Yeah. Man, give me anything under 20, man, I'll take it. And he said, come on, man, I got you under 20. But I didn't know what I was going to get, right? You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking I might give me 15 or something. Man, I go in front of the judge. This motherfucker's got 19 years. I say, this dirty motherfucker. But it's under 20. You know what I'm saying? It's under, yeah, it's, hey, it's under 20. I say, man, this dirty motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? He done sold a nigga out. You know, that's 20. I ain't want 20, but 19 is just like 20. So, so let me ask you this. And, and you can answer it if you, if you want. I am. I'm gonna answer because I'm keeping one hundred. What got you? What What did you do? Explain to the artist what did you do to get you there? Man, I shot a nigga. You know what I'm saying? Now remember we hanging out. You know what I'm saying? We hanging out now. Now this is the streets. You know what I'm saying? And you know the wages. You know the wages of the streets. You know what I'm saying? Death to jail. And you know them. Them the wages. That's what it pay. You know whether a person won't accept or not. If you in them streets, it's gonna be one or the other. Sooner or later, unless you can just get up out of there. You know what I'm saying? You just got to be um, disciplined enough to get up out of there. But you know the wages of them sins. And so I was, I don't ever want to be no victim. So I ain't never mess around. And a nigga was getting out of line. And so I shot it. But we was in the streets. We was, it was a, a gambling situation. You know what I'm saying? It was a hustling type yeah, situation. Yeah. So that's what happened in those situations. And niggas are always trying to get out. Because back then, niggas was snorting that pot. You know what I'm saying? The, the the that powder came through the neighborhood real bad for the younger guy, and it was crack for the older guys. You know what I'm saying? And so a lot of niggas was snorting powder, tripping, smoking water. All oh, that water was bad over there. Crane. Oh, yeah, anybody that from water, Houston? That water. Anybody from Houston? Y'all know about yeah. Crane, the man? Mm -hmm. 
Oh, you know about Crane. You know about Crane. <laughs> hey, hey, man, Crane was, hey, Crane was famous. You know what I'm saying? Niggas came everywhere to get some water off Crane. It was water world, you know what I'm saying? So niggas was on that water and tripping. You know what I'm saying? And so it put everybody in a bad situation. You know what I'm saying? I done smoked water. I done tried. You know what I'm saying? Now, I don't mess around much, but I, I did try before. You know what I'm saying? But I ain't tried much of nothing else. I ain't never tried no powder. But it put us all in bad situations doing the drugs, and I was just in a bad situation, and that's the way I answered the situation. You know what I'm saying? Because I ain't fuck around. You know what I'm saying? I ain't fuck around. Let, let yeah. me ask you the same question. I'm just Go curious. Yeah. What was your age at that time? Man, I was 21. And you at 21, and the first the first sentence you got was 19. That was my very first sentence because I was always a little smart. I never had a felony conviction. I got a, I got a question also. Sounds like both of y'all had court appointed attorneys. Man, I, I, I had a lawyer, but he was an old white boy. You know what I'm saying? Somebody my grandma scraped up, you know, because um, she used to um, clean houses. And it was somebody that she cleaned houses for a friend or something like that. When y'all when y'all got there, having been convicted at 21, were other guys y'all were y'all were uh, in the population with around your age, or were y'all the young guys in the group, or um, what? I was, get, get the mic. Get the mic. I was one of the youngest, and you know what they call jailhouse lawyers, tried this and that, but I'm one of dudes like this. I'm my cousin, like he said, I'm gonna try you, but I know that I'm wrong, but I know this ain't this sentence that they were trying to give me then when the sentence that fit the criteria of my case. And you know, I read up on it and people put me on game. But at the same time, when we went through the system, you had Judge McSpatton, mm -hmm. Ted oh, Polk, Mary Lou Bacon. Mary Lou Bacon. Man. You know, oh, you had man. These judges that was the DA. It was, I'm going to sell you out. And you give me him, I'm going to give me him. So hey, it was a situation. And we, we like we come from a, you know what I mean? We didn't come from a rich family. You know what I mean? And my, I was blessed to have a grandmother, grandfather, but my grandma, grandfather, or my daddy, parents, them. They want for to spend no money at that time from no nah. money because you learn from your mistakes. Yeah. Because they ain't yeah, teaching yeah. that way. Yeah. Because no, we all got good home training. Home yeah. training. We all got yeah. good home training. We was in the Boy Scouts. Yeah, you know yeah I heard y'all say that. Yeah, we was in the Boy Scouts. We was in the Boy Scouts. Yeah, we got, <laughs> I got good home this, training. And this is the crazy thing about it. And, and Jamel might remember, we, me and him, doing like Chris Williams, they went to jail, Larry. The people yeah. that went, that me, that me and him, the two more, yeah. they're not here. They living, but they're not here. That yeah. walk to school, I started, them from, I started them drinking. Yeah. I'm the I one started them drinking. He was always into something. Black like, Book was always doing something. Uh, hey, let me tell you, in our neighborhood, when you with when you with this nigga, oh man, something ain't right. Some going, something about to happen around now. Something about to happen. Something about to happen. When you that age, that. do you? When you that age, are you getting tested first day? Oh, let me answer your question that you had. Um, that that last question. Now, when well, because I had a murder case, right? And so they. So he died. Oh yeah, oh, well yeah, yeah. I told you. I ain't well, well, people get shot all the time, oh, and they don't yeah. always die. Well, no. yeah, this guy died. This guy died. Um, and so, by me having a murder case, they classify me a little different. You know what I mean? Yeah. Dave, so you, when, when you say, when, I'm sorry, when you say classified different, you talking about the population, or you talking about the administration? Well, the population and, and all that. Like when you first go to, they gonna classify you a certain way. Um, so put you at a certain unit. So you saying when you went in, you kind of, you kind of went in with some credibility. Well, and I, I went in with the rejects as far as like you saying, were you the youngest there? Right, right. And so I, where I was at, it was a bunch of young guys. Like when we was on Torres, it was a lot of younger guys there. You know what I mean? So L I wasn't just Let me youngest. ask you this. I, I've had some guys say to me, uh, there were times when a guy could do j state jail or TDC time. And they said they didn't want to do state jail because it was mostly young guys and they fought all the time. Yeah. You know, and so, so did you find that, that the young guys, it's constant shit going on? Constant. Constant. Hey, it's constant. But there was no <laughs> state. So, so go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead there go ahead. was no state jail in the 90s. Yeah, I'm just talking about yeah. when they talk about the age difference. And that's why I'm asking them, you know, what's your age? 
when you yeah. get there, yeah. you know, because you're younger, you know, it's somebody wow. who's saying, hey, do yeah. your time and keep your head down. Oh, no. Younger is definitely wilder. You know, they wilder. And then it was a big gang coaching. You know, when you go to prison, you go with the whole state of Texas. And so them guys, them niggas from Dallas, they was banged out. Now, in Houston, in the 90s, in our area, we didn't have gangs. You know what I mean? We didn't, we didn't have Crips and Bloods. We didn't have Crips and Bloods off Cavalcade in, in 92 or 91. Nah, we didn't. At Cashmere, we didn't have, nah, we didn't we, have no gang we, problem. Whatever neighborhood you, you grew up that in, just, that was pretty much just what it is. If yeah. you from Trinidad Garden, if you from Cam Garden, you from Fifth Ward, Houston but, Gardens, whatever, yeah. that's kind of just how you, you roll. But it was more a neighborhood thing. It was more neighborhood Yeah, it was more anything. neighborhood yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and wasn't nobody even really just really, really banging in. It nah. wasn't really like that. You just. But the banging come from. Put your mic up. The, the banging most at that time was on the southwest side. You had southwest, the GDs. The GDs. GDs, You're right. The Vice Lords right. and this and that. On the south, but but we was north side, so but, I ain't hang out over there that and, much. And then you had. You because had, of that. Yeah, hey. because of that. Because I knew that they was tripping over there. So it wasn't no need for me to go to the Southwest because I wasn't in, I wasn't up to that. Was it some witnesses to the to the shooting? Oh yeah, it was some witnesses. That's why I took my 19 to rent. Right. Yeah, that's why, you know, because they was giving out 75. Because if you go to trial and lose oh, on that murder man, case. Gonna, you know Ted Poe. Yeah. You know Ted Poe was goddamn yeah. hanging let, niggas. Let me do this here. Let me explain to you what it was like in the court system on the legal side. Shit, in the you know. I was in the DA's office. They would sit back in the back and say, like his case, the his defense attorney might have went to school with the prosecutor. They might have been boy. They go. They go. They back there throwing time around like it's nothing. Uh, go and give him thirty-five. No, I think I want to give him forty. So Ted Poe was the kind that he would take out money Ooh. and Tell throw it up in the air. He I throw, much he, he'll in throw a quarter and a nickel. If the twenty-five come down, the quarter come down first. You got man. twenty-five years. Say, Go. man. Hey, man. See that stuff that people didn't know Just about. Just think if he got three quarters in his pocket. So that's Ooh, how got that's, that's how he was doing time. They so what they Zyper. just said about Crane Street and and uh. So I took my night and the waterworks. Man. That's Shit. where City on the Siege and the Jump Out Boys came from. Yep. Yeah. Because they yeah. used to go down there, the white officers used to go down there, and them brothers was down there like OJ. Them white Run officers would jump out their car, <laughs> and them, them brothers would be shaking, move, and be gone. gone. So what they did was they went to the academy, they went to the Sheriff's Department Academy, they went to the HPD Academy, and they got guys that was in the academy like 20, 21 years old, put you in a FedEx truck, put you in a postal truck, and they would, they'd ride. I got to turn. And when you and when Damn you talk man. about the way they were giving out time, man, it's crazy. Montgomery County had that reputation, and they still do. They still do. It and, to this day. and and they and they hit the news because they had bets going on oh, how man. much weight of a person they could send to prison. So they would literally convict the guy, put him on a scale, and whoever had the most weight. Just weighing people. You know, it's a game to them. Just weighing people. We're talking about people's lives. They just win. They run them across the scale, and whoever got the most weight for the day or the week or whatever, they might have to, they, the other people might have to buy them lunch or something. Hey, and that, that's, that's Montgomery County. That hit the news. Hey, they riding to the like, cold, boy. Hey, it's best to pack. What, what, you got, what you got to say? Oh, I say, yeah, they riding to the core. Yeah, they riding to the cold. And, and, I can say this with you, right? Because even in the system that we've been on, I stand on game fire every time I go to penitentiary. We was on 95% gang unit in, in, in 2000, 2001. And I ain't even in no gang. And the whole unit was 95% gang affiliated. I told you I was with the rejects from start to finish. And everybody over <laughs> I ain't there even was, in no gang. Well, everybody was in gang. And, yeah. and the crazy thing about it is, at the time, my people didn't know because, my, like my cousin said, I stayed. Jamel, I tell you, I, be, I was I always small, but I always could hold my own. Yeah. Big or small, I didn't care. That was my mentality. I had a complex of, you know what I mean? Because I was protected of my mama. You know what I mean? I had a sister and a mama. 
in our particular, then yeah, I take yeah, yeah, my yeah, cousin yeah, them. And he'll tell you, I, I was like, I didn't bought nothing. I have been outside and at our house and people have put our pills on our cousin them. And I've been outside and bucked the pills when I was young. But the sister was so messed up that if you didn't have no best law, you don't, you didn't have no, um, um, you know, like the, the brother, the the gang. Gang. and I was uh, kind of yeah, people I was and for himself, you yeah, was really man, in trouble. Yeah. Cause give what I know, I have seen them going there and just tell her, hey man, what you want for, uh, what you want to do? And man, I want to go home. And they to talk to DA and laugh it up and they think, no, you go in front of DA with the same thing, you can bam. You know what I mean? And I seen people get 30 years, 40 years for the third time. If you ever go back, and I know you remember when them girl brought, them seven girl brought the convenience store, they got seven years. But the young dude was 16 years old, they tried him as a adult, he got 45 years. Because he ain't had a lawyer, the race horse hang, Rusty Harden, and all that yeah. kind of stuff. So the system wasn't messed up for us. So, 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 let me say this, sir. I watch a lot of shows, a lot of uh, documentaries on prison and shit like that. In the way, in the way they live. Oh, we're gonna talk about her case in a minute. Yeah, she like she uh, uh, I know, I know. We're gonna hold on, like Jamil. We're gonna talk about her case in a minute. So. <laughs> I watch a lot of them shows and how they live in prison. Is that, tell me prison life. Like, the moment you wake up to the All right. moment you- now Let me, let me tell you, Papa, let me tell you. <laughs> hey, and, and I'ma say this, y'all. When, when I first got off the bus, when I first got off the bus, I knew I was in trouble. I said to myself, man, I ain't gonna never go home. From the moment I got I knew I was in trouble, man. Cause he was a big white boy hollering in my face. And, and you know, for, we didn't have that many, I, you know, I ain't no racist, but we didn't have that many white people. It wasn't no white folks, I'm no white folks know, in our walking down. And they were one too. Yeah, you know, it wasn't no white people walking down our street like that back then, you know? And so I just wasn't down with folks hollering at me like that. And so I knew I was gonna be in trouble. And so from the start, I knew I was kind of fucked. You know what I mean? And so sure enough, with the classification, that I, how they was classifying me due to my case, shit, I'm with the rejects, out the rip, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm on medium custody. You don't even get no chance. So for me, and you know, and look, I told you they had a lot of gang shit going on, so them Dallas niggas, them Dallas niggas was in gangs, right? You know what I'm saying? Them, they, yeah. them niggas was Crips and Bloods, and they was square business Crip and Blood, you know what I mean? But I don't fuck around, so I don't respect that shit. You know what I mean? I, I I just didn't have no respect for it. And so I was, I ain't been what you call, I didn't give a fuck about no gang shit because it didn't matter to me. You know what I mean? I ain't in no gang. I don't give a fuck about that shit. You know, so I was always at odds a little bit right there because they might have felt like I was disrespectful, but I already had it in my mind that I wasn't going nowhere. Did, when you say that you knew you were in trouble, you know, you had something called good time. No, or you no, no. Talk to me. They fucked me over when they get when I got signed up. Uh, I didn't get good time because I had an aggravated case. Well, uh, uh, at least now, certainly on the aggravated case, you got to do half before you're eligible you got, for parole. That, that is what I was under. So, so, <laughs> but that doesn't mean you're gonna make parole. Uh, yes, I it, got denied you, every many, time. You got denied every time. I got denied every time due to poor institutional adjustment. I never adjusted to the institution. Of slavery. Uh, so the way, I, I so the way they looked at you, you were still not ready to bow down to the rules. I wasn't ready. I wasn't. Poor institutional adjustment. That's what it said. And I said, hey, man, how can I adjust to slavery? How can I adjust to being handled? You know what I mean? I got to go out to the fields. You know what I mean? I'm dragging a fucking cotton sack. Hey, man, I wasn't that. I wasn't say Big fear. Nigga, I'm looking down at my, I don't see nothing down there, but. He but, sells that motherfucker uh, heat waving. You don't see that with that heat waving. And, and the crazy thing Dragging about it. Dragging the cotton sack. Man, and, I can't adjust this shit. And then the crazy thing about it is, if you don't, they got a cage out there. Shit. They make you like you a slave, and you in a hot sun, they ain't going to bring you they back. They going to put you in it. You going to wait out there until the goddamn day over. And then in you the, can't the kill the no snake. You out there. You Man. just there. So, 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 so y'all remember that, that docu documentary not too long ago where they talked about that when they outlawed slavery, 13. Thir you remember that documentary? It's on Netflix right now. 13. They outlawed slavery. Uh, the 13th Amendment. It's called 13. People yeah. 13th who in prison. Man. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. The 13th Amendment. If y'all haven't yeah. watched that, watch it on Netflix. It called, it's called 13. It's, it, it just breaks down everything for yeah. you about that that law, about yep. that amendment. Yep. And, how, and how it doesn't apply to people who are in prison. In prison. So yeah, right. technically, I'm they still can the treat slave. you like a, you, I'm right, still they the treat slave. You like a slave. You're property you. of the state of Texas. Yeah. They I'm a ward of the state. That's what I used to tell them. Hey, man, I'm a ward of the state. And look, I'm, I done gotten fights in the kitchen with behind, I'm going to say niggas. You know, we, we, we rolling uncut here. Niggas police. You know what I tell them? Nigga, I'm a ward of the state. This is my shit. <laughs> you know, this is my shit. Nigga, I'm so, a ward of the state. So let me ask you. So, so, so back to my question. <laughs> Your daily routine, daily routine from six from whatever time in the morning you, you have right, to get all up. Right, daily routine. Let me get back on the pop. Daily yeah, routine. Stay focused. All right, my daily routine. Boom. When I'm on a, it depends on what unit you're on is what you're gonna do. Cause certain units do certain shit. You know what I mean? They police different ways. S certain units police different ways. Nigga about to take us down, huh, comedian? <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> big, <laughs> big, uh, big old, uh, big old side fourteen. Chicken, side, side squat ass. Nigga. I thought somebody uh, shot him. I cover. He started talking about day to day. He must have flashbacks or something. Uh, all right, uh, so let me get back on. It. So day to day, man, they gonna have a goddamn work call before anything. Before anything, you gonna have work call first thing in the morning, about about five thirty. You know what I'm saying? Work call. I mean, get your nigga ass up. You know what I'm saying? So if you got a job, you finna get up, get out of there. Now, me being the player that I am, I always like to pick the job. Once I got in prison and kind of like got the game, like paying Do you attention, have to have a job? Well, if you if you are able-bodied, you have to have a job. Yes, you do. You know what it is. It's slavery. Yeah, I thought yeah. maybe you could just... Go to work if you wanted to, and if you didn't Damn. want a job, this nah. is how this goes. Nigga, this slavery. They want to. They want if that you shit don't off work, your back. They, they finna do. Mike, if you don't work, they gonna they gonna write you up. They gonna yeah. take commissary or lock you up. They take Too many cases. You in medium custody, then you go close custody. Twenty three and one. So look, let me get back to daily routine. Twenty three hours lockdown and yeah. one. One, one on the rec yard. One on the rec yard. If you ain't on restriction, and, and so I, I I did a lot of that too, and so. Daily routine. If you if you got, I worked at night at, at, when I was in at my best shit on the micro unit in Tennessee County. I worked at nighttime, so I'm gonna get up in the morning. I'm, I'm gonna be up already. I'm gonna get up. I'm gonna go to rec first thing in the morning at that, that seven o'clock rec. I'm gonna go to rec first thing in the morning. I'm gonna be out there on the rec yard playing basketball, working out. They gonna call count time because they got to know where you at. They count all day. They gonna count you. To make sure ain't nobody got out. When after any kind of mass movement, it's count time. You know to make sure you ain't nobody snuck away. You know, so I'm gonna stay out there on the rec yard to count time. It's gonna be um, soon as count clear, it's child time. You know, cause cause it, I was on the unit, 4,500 people. So you gotta get everybody fed up in a timely manner. You know what I'm saying? And so right out the rec, they gonna do an in and out for child. You're going to stay out there going to child about two, three hours. It's going to take about three hours to feed everybody. Right after child, they're going to do, you got to go back to work. Right after lunch, you got to go back to work. As soon as everybody get to work, they uh, count time all over again. It's about 1 o'clock. They're going to do rec. Outside rec, count time. You're going to stay out there about two, three hours, and I'm going. I'm going to every rec because I'm the kind of nigga that's coming outside. Because remember, I already know I ain't going nowhere. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I know I ain't going nowhere, so I'm outside at all times, anytime the door open. Because, hey, I, this is where I'm be at. You know what I mean? Ain't nothing stopping me. I ain't. And look, let me tell you all this. I went to the penitentiary with some Jordans on, right? And back then, they let you keep your shoes. Yeah. All right? Now, they say, and now remember, I told y'all I ain't no game. I had them blue and black J's. Um, the quarter top blue and black jays. I can't remember what number it was. But they said, hey, man, you need to send them home. Them Crip niggas going to be giving you the blues with them shoes. They going to want them shoes. I say, man, fuck them goddamn Crip niggas. I, I don't give a fuck about that shit. I ain't sending my shoes home. I'm on Polanski unit, the terror unit, the terror dome. You know, this, so, yeah, that's what Death Row was, um, Polanski unit uh, yeah. back in the day. That's what Death Row was. And so, man, 
everybody over there game later. Man, you need to send them shoes home. I ain't send the shit home. I came home with them hoes. Uh, 19 years, I kept them same shoes. You know what I'm saying? Them crib niggas ain't get my shoes. I ain't fuck around. And if any one of my Dallas partners, I got some Dallas partners and Fort Worth partners that take, man, that was that nigga with them J's. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to go to every wreck. You know what I'm saying? They know I'm going to be out there. After wreck, it's dinner time. You know what I'm saying? It, it's dinner time. So they got to feed everybody up in three, four hours. After dinner, they going to send you back. They do another work call, do everything, wreck one more time, and then it's count time again. And so after that, um, it's 7 o'clock movement. After that count, Everybody go if you go to school like night school and shit. They had college. I went to college, um, so I went to night school. I'm just fucking off, you know. I just got free time on my hands, so uh, I signed up for school and shit. And um, shit after that, it's count time all over again. You know they gonna do rec three times a day if you're on a good unit. You will get rec three times a day, but on a lot of them units they fuck you over on your rec. You know what I mean? So if you're a guard, and if you want to be a guard, make sure you know how to count. You're going to do a lot of motherfucking counting. You're going to do a lot of counting. To make sure the men may send now. Now, let me, let me ask you this. Uh, so, the, the, the kind of food they had in that oh, motherfucker, man. like, what's the, what's the, what was the food like? Uh, you want, oh, hey, man. Um, food, nothing. You better Trash. make sure your people seen some money. Or eat you some got soups, you a hustle. Or you got your hustle. Because yeah. the food. It's no, it's, it's not no salt, hard. They, they cook not it for forty five hundred. You know what I mean? Cook for forty five hundred people. Yeah, then you got you like with five thousand people. You know what yeah. I mean? Then it's the food is not worth nothing. Now, but I'm gonna say this: I have worked in the kitchen, you know, because you know, because I move around, yeah. and, and so wherever I'm at, where I need, I'm gonna get wherever I need to be. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm a very picky eater. I ain't eating no pork noodle casserole. <laughs> You know, that's a big thing. That's like um um chili mac, like um what they fucking um what they call that shit? Uh, hamburger uh, helper. Hamburger helper. Hamburg they call, help. they call yeah. Else. And they call it chili mac in the penitentiary. But that's what the fuck it is, hamburger helper, you know what I mean? So I ain't eating that shit. I ain't eating no pork. You know, and, and so they big on pork. You know what I'm saying? I ain't eating no pork. That's the fuck with the Muslims. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't no okay. fu- I, I wasn't no mug, but I ain't eat pork like that. You know what I'm saying? I saw because I, I, on the Michael unit, they had the packing plant where they kill all the pigs for the pork for TDC consumption. You know what I mean? So, nigga, you see all that bullshit. You know what I'm saying? The, the sores on them hoes, they just gonna cut them out, send them across the line. So, I ain't fuck around. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's just nasty. I ain't fuck around in, in, in penitentiary. You got the. I, I when you, when you work in the shit. kitchen, were you able to get your little something? Oh, man, I was stealing. I was still remember. I had the mentality that this is my shit. Re- remember my mentality. This is my shit. I'm a ward of the state, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This is my shit. You know, so I was still everything I could. You know what I mean? So so we're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about them spreads that the motherfuckers oh, make. Them and uh, with the what is it, what is it? Them pizzas and Roman no- with Roman noodles and 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 what it, what it like, come on, tell me what that and, and hooch. Oh, man. Say, I can call a nigga right now. You know what they used to call me? Jesus Christ. I turned water into wine, nigga. That was one of my hustles. You know what I'm saying? I get a nigga on the right now. Hey, because I'm a hustler. You know what I'm saying, nigga? I'm, I'm with whatever. You know what I'm saying? I was hustling. Now, because remember, I ain't going nowhere. You know, all they going to do is write you a case. And you can ask this nigga, I ain't give a fuck about a case. He showed that yeah, he tried to give he, yeah, what the fuck? He, I don't care. He tried to no give case. me to go where he was. I told him, nah, I'm trying to go home. My little girl just been born. Hey, I'm trying to go home. I see the, hey look, now look, let me tell you this story, Pop. I see this nigga, we on Torres unit. It's about 2001, maybe. It's about 2001. And um, I say, man, I'm looking out the window. We on lockdown. We just had a ride. We on lockdown. I'm on medium cussy as usual. Uh, I'm on medium cussy. I'm looking out the window every day. You just look out the window because you ain't got shit to do. You locked down all goddamn day. I see this nigga walking down the sidewalk. Man, what's up, Lamont? What's up, Lamont? Stop and fuck with him. Stop fucking. He wanted to use that. Oh, man, I got to keep going. Right. Man, fuck them hoes. You know, the laws right there trying to um, yeah. keep, keep, keep it moving. moving. Yeah, man, fuck them. I'm cursing out. Man, stop fuck with him. But, you know, that's just how it was, man. It was, I was, I was always on meeting cuts because they made you do, like, now nah, I ended up doing like half of my sentence on medium custody. You know what I mean? Just because of my classification. 
Yeah. 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 All right, so here's what we're going to do. I, uh, we're going to take a quick break, bring some food out, going to feed everybody, make sure everybody eat a little something. We're going to talk about her what case. About her? We're going to talk about her right. case in a minute. Who, you talking about 3, 4, 9, 6, 8? Yeah, we're going to talk about <laughs> We're going to talk about her case in a minute and, and uh, when we get back. But I'm going to make sure everybody get a little food, get a drink in you. If you, if you want something to drink, we're going to come right back. We're going to talk about more about this. Uh, we're going to talk about this riot that happened. That's that's locked up. And Joe, if you, any one of y'all got any questions or anything like that, we're gonna talk about it when we get back. Uh, uh, Brady, we good? You good, bro? Man, we good, man. I'm you know I'm just listening to these war stories. I'm, I'm listening to them too. Man, listen. Say, man, man. it's hey. I don't wanna. I don't. Man, bless their heart. Nigga. You know, <laughs> bless their heart. Whoever Shit. locked up. God damn it. And, and you know, you know the funny Ooh. part about uh, not the funny part, but the thing about. All of us as black people, we either know somebody or got a relative that's locked up. Yeah, damn right. right. Everybody do. Everybody do. Everybody do. And you got one on dope. Yeah, yeah. And you got one on dope. Yeah. So, so, what you got to say, bro? Uh, you know the crazy thing about on our side of the family? A bunch of people our side of the family, they work. He likes, I I, well, I call them squares because they really is. But the crazy about it, we had an uncle. Did a bunch of time on yeah. Sin Lin. Yeah. My cousin and pop. He did, did a time. he did a bunch of time. He did a bunch of time. Oh, and then me. It just you three of us in the whole family that we know of that did a bunch of time. Yeah. And yeah. all of them better than me. And 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 and, and yeah, Donald. Don Donald been yeah, man. a bunch of time. Donald, yeah. And and the crazy about it is like like my cousin said, man, and we we won raised. And like our mom was on dope or nothing like that. My mom worked two jobs, photo wear hiding the summit. So I had anything, but I was one of them kids like This nigga was just bad. Man. I was just that. I was just that I was just that kid. Man, that nigga was terrorizing the motherfucking neighborhood. Anything I can try, I'm gonna try you. I just had to try you. I just had to because it was like my mom used to whip my tail. I mean, I'm scared of whooping. I'm scared of needing. It's like that. But it was crazy about it is my grandmother always taught all our grandkids. We had to go to church. But in church I was bad. Yeah. We used yeah. to leave we used to leave church. And go across the street and play the game. And go play the video games across the street. You know what I mean? Or go to the donut shop. And go, yeah, and or go to Jack in the Box. Yeah. Like Yeah, we used you know to mean? do that shit all the time. But but it, it but but the the thing about it is like me and Jamel went to school with each other, elementary school with each other. We had we had fight with each other. But at the end of the day, we knew each other because that's what it was. And when we seen each other, I knew he had my back. I had his oh, at the same hell time. Hell yeah, man. It's my boy. And, and, and we, his family were like my friend. I see his grandmother like he see my grandmother. And and my cousin tell you the crazy about it is, but when we all come together, it was like it was a family when we grew up. Because it was two streets. If you from Majestic, Inglewood, Dabney, well, Inglewood, Chris, Chris Dabney, Dabney, and Woodwork, and Woodwork. All, the way, all the way to Lockwood, what's the name? And you click with each other, we click with each other. Everybody walk home together. Walked home with each other. <laughs> it, was, it was that walk home shit then. And, and then that was you a, can't fight one person, you got to fight everybody. And that was a long ass fucking walk from over there to, to keep middle school. That was a long ass walk. We'll talk about that shit another time. But we're going to come back. Everybody, we got some food, man, <clears throat> and some drinks. But when we come back, we're gonna talk more about this ride. We got some more questions for you guys that's uh that's been, you know, incarcerated and what's going on in your life next? What's going on now? What are you trying to do? How did you better yourself? Cause that's really what this is all about. You know, you you gave your time to to you know, you did your time. Now you came out, what you gonna do next? What you gonna do to better yourself? Uh, for society and people to accept you the way it is. Now, I had a couple of guys that were supposed to come on that didn't. I really wanted them because everybody's cases is different. So that's what we want to do. Brady, you, you. Man, you ain't. I did 10 years too, dog. 10 years, nigga. Yeah. Now, what you did, Brady? Nigga, I did 10 years in college, nigga. <laughs> it was hard, motherfucker, nigga. <laughs> Same spread y'all had, we had too, nigga. <laughs> I know you right, oh, nah. you When you go to, to college, shit. I went through two presidents, nigga. Yeah. Hell yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Let Fuck what y'all talking about. What, what you say, Richard? He telling the truth. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm they telling the truth. Y'all know I'm nigga. It was hard in the bitch too. That shit was called shit on the street. Nigga. Seat. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> sitting up here, but we we won. We everybody in this motherfucker. We won. Mistake away. Wait, Fucking mistake. we sitting up here talking yeah. shit. Yeah. But I'm just saying, you know, my big mom and them knees was got scabs on them praying for my bad ass because I I feel them. But I was just one. Let's take away. Yeah. One. We don't know. And it was right away from Big Mama now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah All right. So, so when we get back, we're going to talk more about it. Let's take a five minute. Hi, right, we back. Big Stick Energy. Big Stick Energy once again is brought to you by Brock Brand. Go to BrockBrand.com and get your Brock Brand. Look fresh. Look nice with that. Also, Brought to you by Quad Houston. Quad Houston and the Den Cigar Lounge. Both together. Right next to each other. So come have something to eat. Some good food, good drinks, good music. And a good old stick right here in the Den. We're located on 4608 Almeda. Make sure you make your way on through here. Brady Bob. Man. Man. Uh, up, baby? So, so we, we were talking about... Prison life, man. I've been listening to these stories. Now here's the thing about that. Now I, I, I've, I've been to jail by four times, but pimping. no, they hide niggas for pimping now. Mm-hmm. I've been to jail by four times, and every time I was in there for that first hour, I was like, man, I need to get the fuck out of here. No, that's right. <laughs> Where they at? Shit. Hey, what's that's going on? I know that's right. <laughs> so funny story is, yeah, so yeah, I, I I told my I told my wife that what I, what the show was about today, and she's like, I could come on there. I was like, you went to jail for a ticket. Yeah. I did time though. I did time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, ain't the same. <laughs> damn I right. did time. So she feel like she did time. I was like, nah, you ain't do this type of time. Not, not this here. Cause you did this type of time. You probably would have hung yourself, and, mm. and or something like that. But yeah, break the bar. Man, listen, man. I'm gonna tell you this, man. I got, I got a few questions, and then I can honest, honestly say, man, you know. Having having men in my life, and then you know you have a village around you, man. I was the only boy, man. I feel y'all because I used to do some of the same shit y'all was talking about, man. You know what I'm saying? But them people kick my ass, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about kick my ass, kick, yeah. literally beat the shit out of me. You know what I'm talking about? So, you know, one thing I can say about these cats, man, here. Right here, man. Hey, they did their time. You know what I'm saying? They back. They looking good over here. You hear me? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, whatever yeah. they did, they look good. They got positive mind frame. But I remember Nooka back in like 1983. Uh, it was this thing Shit. came on TV called... Scared Straight. You hear me? You hear me? I remember Scared Straight. Nigga, I was in, the, in my old man living room. He said, man, come here, boy. And they had some, they was grabbing niggas, you know what I'm saying? And talking about what they gonna do to them on Scare Straight. This on TV. Yeah. This on yeah, real I TV. That. I remember that. Man, my daddy say, sit down. Sit down right here. He made me watch that shit. He said, keep on doing what you're doing. Yeah, it gonna be down now. Guess what I told my daddy? I said, daddy, uh, guess what? You ain't got to worry about me going down that way. <laughs> you feel me? Because I just ain't want to. But I, I used to get in trouble, but I just ain't want to go down that way. Yeah. So, you know, I kind of, you know, I went the sports route. So the question I wanted to ask y'all, man, y'all was down now. You know, being down now, man, you know, your mind could get to thinking about, like, what you did back in the day that got you in here. You understand? Have you ever thought about, like, man, what if I would have did this? Or what if I would have been playing sports? Because when you watching – Cause I'm sure y'all talented and all that type of stuff. I'm sure ain't no. It might be the, the a Jordan down now that we ain't never seen that them niggas seen. Yeah. You feel me? That they know nigga do Jordan right now. You know you got those type of mm-hmm. uh, stories that have you ever thought about like man what if what if I would have did this or what if I would have did this way if I wouldn't have came up in this even though it made you who you are. I don't think right Booger goddamn ever thought about that. But, but come on Booger, back up. I think because this nigga. 
you gotta remember what we said. This nigga just always been booger. Yeah. I don't think this nigga ever thought about doing nothing else yeah, but being yeah, booger. Yeah, it's because on the cool though, Jamel might remember. I know Papa do. We used to play football at St. Francis. Nigga, I remember that. I remember but, when you and Carlos broke that. I ain't got them um, collarbone, nigga, behind car, car, car. I and, remember that, too. Yeah. And nigga, I was my, out there my playing look, football. And, and when I did get to Cadmill, did go to school, it was like, yeah, I want to play football. And a lot of people said, if I would have stick to it, I think I might have. And I might have didn't. But, at the, oh, you know, God. I think about it, and, I you know, I wish I would have took a different route. But, you know, I can't turn the hand back time. Because right now today, what I went through made me a stronger person in in a mind frame. Because some people can't ha- handle it. I have seen people. I know Jamal has too. Yeah. I have seen people get stabbed. Oh, man. I have seen people get raped. I seen nigga nose dive out three row. He yeah. couldn't take it no more. He was square bitch. I seen bitten. people get hung. He, he, he jumped up out three row. He was square bitch. I'm talking about I had life in it. Man, this is crazy. But I was at Pulaski in 2014. And the dude was called a Green Mile. Y'all never met. It's not nobody in his age. This man was gone that long. He was gone. Well, 55 years Dang. flat. And he was on death row. He left when he was 17 years old. And the crazy about it, and Jamel and that, if, if you look at it, what everybody mama looked at his channel at 11 o'clock. Everybody, look, people looked at Young and the Rest. He ain't looking at yeah. And every TV in the pen, she's on Young and the Rest. Them niggas so fight heard, behind that whole ass yeah, shit. That, so when you I go that? down there and behind see this the man, stores. when I see this man gone 55 years, I don't know how long he gone, but I kept seeing a big old black dude like the Green Mile, big black summer gun, and I ain't trying to get close to him. Not scared of him, but we sit there and, and people laugh, and he raised up, and he told them people to shut up. I want to look at Young and the rest of it. And everybody looked at, and everybody looked at each other, and they started moving around because they like, man, what's going on? And... The old school called me one day, told me, hey, y'all, so come in, let me talk to you. I'm like, son, I don't want to talk. When he told me his number, he said, man, I've been gone 55 years. I couldn't believe it. I said, huh? I said, you serious? Said, and he told me some real stuff. He said, man, when you get out, this ain't a place. I said, you ever going to come on? He said, I'd never come on. I said, what? He said, this is it, my home. Jamel know what I'm talking about. And, yeah. and and when he said that, it made me realize when I came on, because I lost my grandfather four years later. That was like my daddy. And when I realized, I think about it every day. What you just said, he didn't even think what he just said. You know what I mean? Because we still, I'm, I'm human. I'm going to make mistakes. You know what I mean? But when you go through the thing, I, I thank God every day that I made it out. Some people didn't make it out. You know what I mean? Like the man said, I'm talking about I have been places that you turn around. He'll tell you. You turn around when you see certain things because it's not your business. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah, talking yeah. about, it's, I'm talking about, I'm, hey, hey, man, I'm talking about, I'm walking to a red one day I'm and, and a mess can get hit, man, get stabbed. And, and, and when he stabbed him, hey, I didn't go to breakfast. I didn't want them pancake. I didn't want that peanut butter pancake for nothing in the world. I know one thing. Forget that peanut pancake. We forgot to lock down. Hey, man. We stayed on lockdown. So, you know, everybody. I think everybody down, like you said, I seen some talented people down there from drawing, playing yeah. basketball. Yeah. I'm talking about some bad summer guns that know the law. You know, every if 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 a nigga got a little sense, you know what I'm saying, he done, he done thought, but you, now, I done, he done thought about what you said. Man, them what if scenarios. You know what I'm saying? Because you got a lot of time to sit in there and think. Them what if motherfucking scenarios, you know what I'm saying? So we all had them, you know. But once you make that mistake, like I say, man, it's you just one mistake away, you know what I'm saying? And I was young, you know what I mean? And, and I made a mistake, and it, it cost me, you know what I'm saying? It cost, I made a bad decision at because I was aggravated, you know what I mean? Because I was aggravated. But I used to be on weed, I used to be on pills, syrup, you know what I'm saying? All the drugs that was. I ain't smoke water or do powder, but I was on the syrup and the pills and all that shit. So let me ask you, let me ask you a question. So, okay, you say you did 19 years. Flat. So now I, no, I got 19 years. Yeah. I did 18 and some change. Mm-hmm. They kicked me out. They they um, they wouldn't let me do it out. So within, within 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 those 18 years, 
So can you tell me how many books did you read or did you read any books to get your, your mental? Because, you know, sitting down, working all the time, do you give your, t- your mind time to, you know what I'm saying, to understand, okay, let me see what I'm out here while I'm in here learning the law. You understand? Like law books and that. You know, like uh, any other type of books that'll help you advance mentally when well, you was in a. For, for me, I for me, I read. I read. You know what I'm saying? I, I read because I've always been a decent. You know what I mean? I, I was a decent student. You know what I'm saying? I always had a little sense. You know what I mean? Remember, I told you I went to TSU. You know what I'm saying? When I first graduated, I had, uh, went to TSU. Just killing time. You know, because, you know, when you first were, I didn't know what I was going to do or what I wanted to do, you know. But I had some goddamn sense. You know what I mean? I knew I had to come up with something. But I was young and didn't know, you know, because a lot of young niggas fresh right out of high school don't know what they going to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, you really lost if you ain't had no guidance like that. If your mom and dad ain't did nothing but work, you yeah. can think it, figure it work because that's all that they done told you to do. Go to school, get a job, and work. You know what I'm saying? And, and so... I ain't know what I was gonna do. I ain't like nobody telling me what to do, so I just struck out mm-hmm. on my own. But um, you know, I, when I was down there, I went to um, I got my degree from Trinity Valley Community College. Yeah, that's real. That's yeah, real, I, bro. I did that um, HVAC. Yeah. I got my HVAC degree. I got um, I did because they do have programs now yeah, to help they, you. They got programs. That's what that's what I meant to say. Because I'm a teacher. You understand? Yeah. I'm a teacher, so you know, and I like like. I'm from Third Ward. I'm from the hood. You know, I'm right down the street. So, you know, like you say, we one mistake away. And I always thought about, like, when y'all telling these stories, man, my, I get chills in my arm because, man, I probably wouldn't have made it, bro. I'm just being, I'm a real nigga. You, I talk you, about real nigga hey, shit. You would have made it. I would have made it, but shit. I'm just saying, if, you know, me understanding, like, damn, bro, I got to, you know, I'm down here, and if I make this decision, bro, you know, I can't get out. You can't feel me? Out. You locked in. You feel you me? So, and, and I'm but claustrophobic. You, but, you feel when me? When you say that, you know what's inter- inter- interesting to me, man, especially when I listen to both of these guys, it seemed like y'all may have had two different attitudes about how y'all did the time. No. Yeah. Because yeah. my we man here, when I, when I talk to a boy now, a young fella, and he, and say maybe he about to get his second felony, or maybe his third, he habitual. And I asked him about that first time. If he tell me that he got 19 and he did 18 and change, I'm going to be honest with you. First thing I think is this nigga was fucking up the whole time he was in prison. Because it, because it seems to me that if you got 19 and damn near had to do all 19, yeah. what do you, what, what's going on that you got to do all 19? Well, because I couldn't adjust to the institution of slavery. I just couldn't do it. I, I just, it was just hard for me to adjust to the institution. Of did you, but did you ever think about, you know, if I if I move different, I, you know, on 19, I'm habitual. I'm eligible for parole at 10, 11. Um, yeah. And so maybe if I move different, maybe I'll make parole I'll, next I'll fake, time. I'll fake it till you make it. Man, I tried my best. I tried my best. I tried, man. But it's just certain things that I just don't tolerate. You know, it's just hard. You got to stand for something. And so it, it just didn't work. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I'm trying. Because I want to see my grandma. You know what I'm saying? I want to get out. Because my grandma made it to like 100. Waiting on me, man. My grandma made it to 100. Waiting on me. But I wanted to, man. But certain shit, I just couldn't go for I'm, I'm sorry. What's your name, bro? Lamont. Lamont. You know, when, when I'm saying it sounds like y'all kind of we had did. a different one. Talk to me about talk to me about your, the way your mind frame was. My mind frame to coming home. His mind frame was getting in trouble. My mind frame cause put the mic, mic, mic. mic, mic My mind frame was we cause see, I I I I, I thought, but when he he correct people thought like that. Me, he I had a little girl and I had a son, so my mind no frame kids. he ain't had no kids. So my mind frame I had to come home cause I didn't want. The same thing my daughter didn't come see me and i had a blessing when they she did come see me she knew she knew who i was but we we did have two mind frame but at the same time his frame he 
we 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 went we was on different unit with each other. I knew I had to be there for ten for sure. I, I guarantee you got to do ten or, or nine and a half. Did you I, think it's a big difference between ten and eighteen? Yeah. Now now, but this is the thing. We, all right. Now I had a murder case. I got nineteen years. Remember they was giving out seventy five. So they looking like I got away anyway. You know what I'm saying? Oh, he ain't getting up at nineteen. You know, and so. Back then, if you got an aggravated case with a pistol, the unwritten rule, now this was the unwritten rule, you're going you're gonna to come up, but you know you're going to have to do three-fourths of your sentence. You're going to have to do 75% of your sentence. You know what I mean? So that was, now what, that was the unwritten rule. You know, they had it saying one way for, 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 the, for the people. You know what I mean? Well, all he can come up in half of his sentence. But... I'm going to come up in half of it, but I ain't going to make it because the unwritten rule for the parole board is you need to do 75% of your sentence. So I know I'm not going to make the first one. Guaranteed, right? It's guaranteed because I'm in prison and I'm conscious. I'm looking at the unwritten rule. You're going to do 75%. So I ain't going to make the first one. Mike. Mike. Oh, I ain't going to make the first one. I ain't going to make the second one. I ain't going to make the third one. You know, it's, it's automatic. So at that point, you figure you're going to, you know, so at it's the like, minimum you're doing 15, you already know that. Minimum. Hey, now I'm going to be honest with you. I, I shot for 13. I, I, I had my mind, man, I ought to get out in about 14 years. That's what I had my, my honestly in my mind. Once I got there and I got in the mix, you know, and seen it, I was like, all right, I might can get out in 14 years. Because once I got to a certain unit, it's Cadillac. You know what I mean? So I ain't getting in no real trouble because I'm having it my way. You know what I mean? So, but it's just steady. I'm talking about steady denial. Poor institutional adjustment. So, Poor but, institutional so, adjustment. So, so uh, a lot of people owe you, Jamel. For I what? get I get kids off telling the DA they ain't you. Yeah. When a good kid come through, or not a good kid, but a kid with potential that's easily to see, or somebody who clearly ain't built like that. Yeah. I go to the DA, and if they give a damn at all, I say, hey, you know, this kid ain't built like that. Or this kid, he made a mistake, and it's pretty clear he going to do better. Man, than that was time. the fucking 90s, though, man. Now, it, now it, it's it's always, it, I'm talking about the people who wasn't, really wasn't built like that. Yeah. If you, because I tell kids all the time, even if you're going to do wrong, take the old lady trash out. Yeah. You know, go to the store for somebody. So somebody so, can speak on your cash. Yes, sir. Yeah. And so it's guys like you that's built for it. And then when those kids come through, I've gotten them off. That's good. What, yeah. what, what was your record like? What was your record like at the time you got that case? Oh, I never had a felony conviction. Hey, how, remember, how many misdemeanors at that I've time? I never had anything. Remember what they said. Hey, man, I was in the Boy Scouts. I always remember that. I've never had a felony conviction. But Lee Van, the thing is, is people can see your mentality. And I, I and yeah. I and I respect you because yeah. I'm the same way. Like you talked about your sister. I never went to prison, but I was ready to go because if somebody did something to my sister, I wasn't going to the police. Yeah. But when you stand before that DA and that judge and they can tell, okay. He not breaking. Yeah, you gonna get that time. Yeah, and see, but by contrast, the kid who come through there and it's like he really not like that. Sometimes they put him in jail anyway. Sometimes they let him out. Yeah, I you know I never went in front of the judge. You know they made they made my deal before I just went and stood there. They already had it set uh, that I was gonna sign for because it's the nineties. Remember that, and the court system was messed up. I mean, but but look, you wasn't going to trial. I, because I'm going to lose. You know, I, well, I got No, action. you're going to lose. And the question is, you thinking if I go. I'm going to get 75. Exactly. I'm going to get 75. Exactly. So when so yeah. you basically making a plea bargain yeah. just to minimize your risk. Minimize. Cause I, in I, terms I say, of how much time you're going to get. Yeah, that, that's what I was trying to do. Because you know, and, I know and I'm going to lose. And let's, let's speak about something else that came up. One thing about court-appointed lawyers, because I've done a lot of court-appointed work, but the difference, here, here's the difference between paying and court appointment. The first difference is if you pay and you get to choose your lawyer. If it's court appointed, you don't. No. 
Some people will get a court-appointed lawyer who is a damn good lawyer because there's some damn good court-appointed lawyers out there. Who care, huh? But who care, who can fight, and who's some damn good lawyers because a lot of times people will go and get, they'll go get a paid lawyer who people don't realize if you take 100 lawyers at that criminal courthouse, it ain't but about 15 out of those 100 who try cases regularly. Mm-hmm. I've been, I was trying cases my very first week as a lawyer, as a prosecutor. It's only about 15 out of 100 who try them regularly, and out of that 15, only about eight or nine do it great. Hmm. And so you might get that lawyer because what people don't understand is that some of those court-appointed lawyers, they, they go into war every single day, and they hone in their craft. Yeah. But, the, the, but, you, but because you don't get to choose, you might get that one who, who all the prosecutors know. You know, it's like, like I got a jury docket coming up Monday in Waller County. And when I look at that it's docket, it might County. be 25 cases set. But I know those lawyers. And I know this motherfucker ain't going to trial. <laughs> so when you start counting to see if my case is going, it might be 10 lawyers in front of me. And I know ain't none of these motherfuckers going to trial. They don't have the guts for it. And so they're going to work something out. And so you might get that court-appointed lawyer who doesn't try cases. You know, they might talk a lot of shit, but they don't try cases. Yeah, they still so, the, so not only do I know that as a lawyer, but the prosecutor knows that. So when he yeah. make, so when he tells that lawyer, your boy got to take this number, hmm. that lawyer might talk all the shit he want, but what they know he ain't going to do is go to trial. And unless they have, and unless that prosecutor yeah. knows that you will tee it up and try it, then he doesn't have any reason to really negotiate with you because you don't have no leverage. Yeah. Hey, so uh, before, you, before you had something to say, Rich? No, I was just going to ask both of them. Uh, when y'all got out, what was the biggest thing y'all had to adjust to? Because I had a friend, he went to prison August of 79 when we graduated mm. from high school. Shit. He got out. Shit. He got out in 2010. God damn, that's, that, that, that's too much count time, damn near so me, huh? He didn't know, he he ended up going back because he couldn't yeah, adjust. He couldn't you know, adjust. cell phone, cars going too fast. Yeah. He, you know. Oh, man. Everything changed in three generations. And, 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 and what, I've, what I've heard some say, no, just, I just you said know, everything I, changes had, in two, like, three like generations. Somebody said, we all got family members. Yeah. And I had, I had a family member, and what he couldn't adjust to was not having a routine. He couldn't adjust to that. Once he got out, and there's like, you talk about that count, and there's a routine yeah. that every single day, this is what you do. And so when he got out, he didn't have a routine. You know, he didn't have somebody telling him, you get up at this time, you go do this at this time, you do that at that time. And he couldn't adjust to not having that routine. You know, and, it, and so it, it, it it, it, was, it put him in a situation where now he's got to decide for himself what he's going to do, and it's only one thing he know to do. And so he went back and did the same shit. So so I'm going to pick it back off of your comment, I mean, your question, because, Jamil, obviously you did more time than, than, than Booger. Now, we've had, we've, we had people that we grew up with that done, how many years did Romeo did? 30? Romeo did 30 years straight. 28. Yeah. Ro- uh, Romeo did 28. B. D. Claw did 28. Dow Wayne, uh, Dow Wayne did, did 30 feds. Did 30. 30 fed time. Fed time. Sid did 23 years fed time. Sid did 23. Damn. Um, That's so, a lot you know, of time. like like Papa said, it, we, I, it, it's, it's a lot of um, time. Because uh, Jamel know people. And just down there right now. We got a partner that we went to school with. Jane Farrow been gone. Oh, yeah. He's been gone long forever. Yeah. Since yeah. Like. My partner, Randy, Cl- uh, Randy T. Randy, Randy Butler. Randy Butler. Been gone since 97 for to be 30. He don't see parole to 30. But that's kind of numbers they was Jay. giving out. Yeah. You know, he got it. life sentence. He got three life sentences. And they probably, they, and and he you got know. T- he gave, listen, this is crazy about it is Texas, Houston didn't want to up his life sentence. Dallas and San Antonio did. 
and, fed appeal attorney and, and, and all got 20 robbery. and 25. And he did charge in the Senate, but Tick Houston did not want to unlift the life sentence. Wow. So, so here's my question, though. During all those years, you've done 10 plus, you've done 18. What was the first thing, when you got home, when you touched ground, what was the first thing that you just had to do? Like, what you, what did you do? Well, I'm waiting to hear the answer to that. Well, shit. Well, well, you know, well, you know, I ain't gonna, I ain't, well, she didn't know anyway, so. Um, had to go uh, see your wife? Well, yeah, the, well, well, the see, not just that, it was, I couldn't do no time with a woman. So my daughter and my auntie, the one that did time with me, I had to see them because without them, I wouldn't have made it. And you know, the crazy thing about it, I remember he said earlier, like I said, me and Papa didn't grew up in the church house. I read, I didn't read them kind of books. I read novel, but I kept a relationship with the man upstairs more than anything. I don't care how much weight I hit, I made sure I stayed on my knee kind of one day or another. I'm a, he, he's always there for me. Cause me, I'm gonna I'm wind and take. Now when I got the 45 years sin, I got it in Liberty County. Like you said. In Liberty? Yeah, I got sold a lot. And I know the DA gonna say, that my lawyer gonna say, my you know the niggas find it. religion in the penitentiary. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you know how that go. You know, niggas always find religion in the penitentiary. So, so that's, yeah. that's where Jesus at. Yeah. So, so the question, yeah. the yeah. question is, <laughs> what, what did you do? Where you went? Um, all right, let me think, man. When I first got out, pop man, my mom and them came and got me, man. Man, my biggest thing, the first thing I kind of wanted to do, was get on Woolworth Street, and see my aunties and shit. You know what I mean? That was all I wanted to Cause do. Because you came around on Chris Street. We was all hanging out on Chris Street. Yeah. You yeah. came around there, I and we saw you for the first time, man, you know, to, since I'm the 90s. People, man. Yeah. Oh, shit. Did y'all get regular visits, man? I did. Well, when I got regular visits. My mama. And, you know, you're going to have a certain select few to come mess with. My mama, my cousin Bam, my cousin BB, Katasa. Yeah, to yeah, to uh, And you know she had three or four kids early. Yeah. So the kids would ride with my mama, and so uh, be her just traveling. But and so she just them. Yeah, you know I had a certain little, a little click. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you look family. forward to that shit? Hell yeah! But I told my mama, I said, man, mom, I ain't gonna never get out medium custody, man. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I say, man, it don't seem I ever get off this shit. And she said, oh, that's all right. I'm going to come see you wherever they send you. You know, because they send me, they send you to different places. Like, when we got in the ride, they ship you. They ship me from fucking way out somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Off the ride. Because we was in Beeville with all the Mexicans. Um, um, with the Torres and all that shit. Got in the ride down there, so they shipped me to Polanski. Um, Livingston. In Livingston. Which ain't bad from Houston. You know what I mean? It ain't bad. Then we got, I got in trouble over there, and they sent me to um, Tennessee Colony, to Michael, right there by Beto and all that shit. So I was right there. And so, man, I, I went in classification one time. I'm going to tell you how fucked up it is. And I ain't just down there getting in trouble fucking up. You know what I'm saying? I'm just living my life, you know, because I'm just chilling. And so I'm going to have a creature conference. I'm going to have me a speaker in my cell with my radio. I'm going to have my radio fixed up where I can look, listen to movies, like, on the radio. But that's against the rules, you know what I mean? Right. But shit. Oh, but 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 that's against the rules. But I'ma do it, cause shit. I want, you know, I'm at the highs. I'm chilling. You know, I'm I'ma have me a speaker where I can have the radio up jamming loud in my cell. You know, but if the law come through, they'll try and take it and write you up. So I'm, I might get rolled up for having me a speaker, but that's just a creature comfort that I'm trying to have for myself. You know what I mean? While I'm down there, right? And so um. One time I'm in, in classification, coming up off medium custody, right? And, and and the man asked me my name, the warden. When you go to classification, you sit in front of the warden, the major, maybe a captain or something. So I'm trying to go from closed custody to medium custody or either medium custody to general population, right? And so I, I'm, all I did was sit down in the seat and the man asked me my name. And you know what I told him? 
Mr. Crawford, Mr. Jamel Crawford. That's all I said, Mr. Jamel Crawford. He said, what? You ain't no mister. You know, the man told me I ain't no mister. You ain't no mister until you get to society doing it. I said, hey, man, I don't want to hear all this shit. I, I told you, you know, I, I went off. You know what I'm saying? I told man, fuck you. You know, I'm going off because I say, hey, you asked me my name. I told you my, who I am. You know what I mean? I don't give a fuck what you want to call me, who you think I am. I'm telling you who I am. Get him the fuck out of here, you know? So down I go. You know what I'm saying? Down go Yeah. And, and, and so I tell my mama what happened. She say, well, that's all right. Just don't let him take, she would say, if, if I got to keep coming to see you like that, we just won't hug each other for a while. You know, she say, don't let him take your dignity or something. She say, don't let him, she say, that's all right. I'm going to keep coming to see you. So, Jamel, given how strong your will is, when you got out, did you know you wasn't going back? And why oh, did you? I knew. I let, yeah. Two part to the question. That's the first part. And the second part is why didn't you go back? What did you do different? Um, well, I knew I knew I wasn't gonna go back because my anger, my anger and not controlling my emotions is what sent me down there. You know what I'm saying? Because if I had been paying thinking better and not in a drug induced haze and a, and angry, just aggravated, out there hustling in the streets, just aggravated, you know what I mean? I might have done something different. You know what I mean? And that's what I came up with about why I was in the penitentiary. I might have could have came up with something different if I would have been thinking clearly or properly, you know? But a lot of time a nigga ain't thinking properly when you out there like that, you know what I mean? You ain't thinking clearly. And so I knew that I wasn't coming back because they got me on, I, I I tripped out. You know, the laws ain't never catch me doing nothing, you know, as far as selling dope. Because Booker's gonna sell dope, we gonna do whatever. And don't, I ain't never had a dope case. I, all the niggas had dope case. I ain't never had a dope case. And I was right out there selling dope and fucking out with her. You know what I'm saying? So I knew I wasn't going to come back to prison because it's just my mentality. You know what I'm saying? I ain't finna go out like that. I'm going control myself. And, I'm, and I know I got to work. You know what I'm saying? I know I got to do something to give me some money. You know what I mean? And so the first thing I did when I got out, I needed some right now money. And I ended up cutting some grass. And, uh, because that's right now money. And because I was trying to find some money right now. And I used to cut hair. I ain't never really had no job. You know what I mean? I've always been like an entrepreneur in whatever field that you want to, you know, you can call it whatever you want, entrepreneur. You know what I'm saying? Back hustling or whatever. I ain't never really had no job. So I knew I wasn't going to, I used to cut hair. You know what I'm saying? You remember, I used to cut hair. I started off cutting Larry hair in the seventh grade. And so I knew I wasn't going to have no job. And I couldn't go to the barber thing, because it took nine months to get your license. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got nine months. I'm already goddamn 18 behind. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got nine months. I'm 40 something. I ain't got no kids, so I needed right now money, so I started cutting grass, because you're going to pay me right now for cutting your grass. You know what I'm saying? You're going to pay me cash right now. So I just started cutting a bunch of grass while I could, you know what I mean, yeah. until I found something. And then my homeboy owned a car wash. And uh, matter of fact, it's, it's my, my cousin, um, Guy, her boyfriend, he on the car wash, and he said, man, you can come work at the car wash. You know what I'm saying? He say, I know, he know me, you know what I mean? He know me from back before I went to prison. I used to cut this nigga hair, you know what I mean? Matter of fact, this was the last nigga said something to me before he dropped me off. He said, man, where you going with that gun, Jamel? And I say, nigga, just drop me off. Man, you gonna get yourself in trouble. That's what he told me, you gonna get yourself, you better chill out. I had just cut the nigga hair, huh? And uh, I said, man, let me out, nigga. You know, that's what my nigga let me out. You know what I'm saying? And um, and he had a car wash by the time I got out. He got two of them motherfuckers now, right? And uh, he's like, man, I'm gonna let you work at the car wash. So I worked at the car wash for like a year, and then I went on and did my own thing. You know what I'm saying? Just, but I always cut grass. Like when I wasn't working at the car wash, I was cutting grass. But I had told myself, I say, man, I'm gonna just work nonstop. I'm gonna just disappear off the set, just like I was in prison. Cause wasn't nobody checking for a nigga when I was in prison, you know what I'm saying? So I ain't finna be checking for nobody now. I'm finna disappear with, with whatever I can, making me some money, you know what I'm saying? Until I just get it all the way down. And, and so that's what I did. And I just cut grass and, and worked at that car wash. So, so in a minute we're gonna talk about your business, about uh, what you do now. Yeah. Uh, this this shit has been like real interesting to a lot of people. I wish I had a couple of more guys that who had different cases. Yeah. I know you had a murder case, Booger, you had um, 
Burglar. What? Burglar. 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 It really is no bigger case than the nah. murder case. Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying. Yeah, I mean, it but would have been capital. yeah, but yeah. I'm just saying, like guys who say, like one of my partners who came, he he had he, I wish he'd have came, but he had got locked up in Nevada. He did Shit. six years in Nevada for pimping and pandering. Mm. Pimping. So, uh, but I I really wanted him to come, but he, he he now he's doing great. He got his own business and stuff like that. So those are type of things that we want to talk about. All right, what yeah. did you do? And we're going to get into that on the next part of in, in a minute. But yeah. everything has been so like so interesting to hear brothers go through what they went through, especially when they went through it at a younger age and now you guys are 50. Yeah, man, shit. And and, and, shit. and when you when you think about that time, I'm 48 though for the record. Uh well, uh, all right. Okay, but now, but when you think about that time that was lost, like that's a lot of goddamn time. That's a lot of Christmas birthdays. That's a lot of Christmas, a lot yeah, of birthdays, yeah, a lot of, lot of birthdays, Mother's Days, a lot of everything. A lot of no pussy can I, too. Can I tell you something? A lot of no uh, pussy. Uh, a lot of no, uh, yeah, a lot of no pussy. A lot of no pussy too, man. Uh, my homeboy that went went to prison when we was in high school. One day we were just sitting down talking. He said, "Man, tell me about Jordan." I said, what? He said, tell me about Jordan. What he, what was he like? I said, he ain't dead. You can go <laughs> on YouTube. What's that? Yeah. He didn't know. He didn't know how to operate a hey. cell phone. Hey, man. He didn't know how to get on a computer. And I, and he was just miserable. So I just hey, said, man, man ain't, nobody, ain't nobody have a problem with you. We will show you. Yeah. So when you went, yeah. when you went down 7-9, ESPN hadn't really started. Well, none of that thought about none it. None of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, I was telling them, Boogie, one time about when Lewis got out. And Lewis had been locked up so long that he called his brother and told his brother, man, I'm in some store called Walmart. You know how long you got to be to be locked and up and, and not know Walmart? Yeah. yeah. That is crazy to me. Hey, I'm going to tell you, man. I'm one of those guys who missed the internet age. You know what I mean? Because I went to prison in 98, and I got out in 17. So they didn't have cell phones when I went. They didn't have the internet. They didn't have anything. So the guy that you speak of back there, I am nigga. I don't know how. I still don't know how to work a computer now. Like, like how you can log in yeah. and fuck around. I really don't know how to do that. I be getting assistance to do it. You know, and, and when shit come across my phone, I, I try and learn it. But I, I really, I, I'm, I'm still ignorant to the to the computer. I know about the internet and the phone, but computer wise, I don't know how to sit down and and just act the fool on the computer. I can't do no spreadsheet, and 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 this shit that be having to go on in my business with some of the shit I done pop. You know what I'm saying? But I got somebody to help me do it. That, yeah. that kind of do it. Yeah. But I don't meet myself. I can't log on. And, and go to this here or that there, but I can do a little something on Google search on Google and, yeah. and YouTube University. Yeah. But I ain't know nothing about that shit. You know what I'm saying? Seventeen, nigga, I'm lost. Yeah. I'm lost. Now they had cell phones in prison, but I never, I, I didn't used to fuck with the cell phones like that because they was giving out more time for cell phones. They were giving out two and three years for cell phones, but you would have to do your first sentence first, yeah. and then. Do your cell phone center. But this this is crazy about it. So what I you want to do all what that. you what he just said about your homeboy and people that how Texas do it. Well people do a lot of times, 19, 18, whatever year, blah, this and that. <coughs> they throw on to the dundas. They just kick you There's out. There's not no re entry program they to show you how you to adapt to the side tip. Hell and yeah. You used to certain things in there. You know what I mean? You might yeah. be used to walking, but you're not used to no Cause I had a homeboy still walking with their hand behind their back yeah, and shit. I, uh, Trump, shit uh, like Troy, that. For neighborhood, he friend went to the bath. He went did one time, and when he went to the bathroom, when you move from the to toilet and it flushed, he jumped. He got scared. He said, "Man, what's going on?" It, you know what I mean? People are not used to it, but when Texas, when you get out, they don't care. All they know you a number. Hey, Hope you come back. Kick your ass out. So let me ask you this: When you when you when you locked up, and and you got one toilet yeah. in the stall. 
and they making hooch out of the toilet? No, nah, no. Nah. So, uh, how that we, work? Now, I'm going to tell you what we do. We used to put hooch behind the toilet. They moved the toilet. Yeah. We used to, we used, now, it ain't nothing but a gap. This is my little special. And, and it depends on what unit you're on, because these units is built different. You have some old style units red like brick. the walls, like the red, red brick, brick. Um, like the old units like in Huntsville. You got them units. Then you got the newer units like Polanski and Michael. They they a different style, right? So they got different a different setup. The cells are bigger. So the toilet got a little gap in it. You know, they, they got caulking, but they put it up against the wall. And the toilet is hollow in the back of it. The toilet is hollow in the back of it, right? So what we used to do, we going to thread a plastic bag, a pla like a little plastic garbage bag. We're going to push a plastic garbage bag behind the toilet and get a funnel, fill that bitch up with water. It's going to be behind the toilet, you know what I mean? Because it's going to fill up behind the toilet. We're going to fill that bitch up with water. You add your sugar, you melt your sugar down, you put all your little ingredients in there, you start a kid and all that, your fruit, your orange juice and shit, and you just let it roll. You know what I'm saying? It's going to start fermenting. So what made, what made it an alcoholic beverage? It's gonna start fermenting. Ferment. Your fruit, you you put the fruit. You know, fruit. if you get fruit and sugar, yeah. shit, and it's gonna it's gonna go to work. Hell yes, yeah, fruit. You heard it. It's gonna go to work on its own. <laughs> so so so. Besides that, the uh, I've had a cousin came out and he said, "Man, I seen I seen such such that were locked locked up with me, mm. and he was the same unit I was." But he walking around like he a tough guy, but he was in there fucking them punks. Now they had them. They had they called them booty bandits. Booty bandits. Booty bandits. Now they hey, they they on that diddy shit. Yeah. They on that diddy shit out there for real. You know what I'm saying? Let let me let me let me Hell yeah. And Jamel tell you, and and I wish I could one of my partners going down and do it. I'm gonna tell this wide girl from whatever. But crazy about that is expose themselves. Yeah, I'm gonna expose them. I had to. But the crazy thing about it. When they down there, them, do, them people knowing, to me, my thing is, before they went to jail, they was all right messing with them boys. Man, and some I, of them it, just it, break weak, man. And, and some, some of them just weak. break weak. Cause if, I have seen, if a nigga got 70 years, man. Oh, you get him a boy. Hey, he ain't got to. He ain't got to. He can stand firm if he so desire. But hey, man, if he weak, he might break weak. He you know break. what I'm saying? He gonna break weak. Now, but, now, but because just like they got put, they got female guards down there. And a hoe gonna be a hoe. You know what I'm saying? You can buy you some pussy. If you're on the right unit, you can buy you a shot. You ain't gotta fuck no boy. Them niggas fucking them boys cause they want to. You know well, what I'm saying? You ain't they, got to. They, you know, I've been on units that, that like he said, it's two ways you're gonna do your time. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna get down or you're gonna lay down. Yeah. Or I, I got a partner right now Got two kids from a guard. His kids are grown right now. Yeah, and that, it happens. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the niggas fuck with them female guard. But man, I'm just be honest. A nigga do a lot of jacking off. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah. living in a fantasy. That yeah. I, you know, living in a fantasy world, dog. So, oh. so did you jack off to a guard? Oh man, you know, hey man, cold you, twenty. I, hey man, I don't got a cold twenty before. But it's been crazy situations. It's all kind of situations. Now I, I'm trying to talk myself into something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I'm trying to talk myself into something. So you got some guys, they gonna stand there and watch it because they understand the struggle. You know what I'm saying? Because nigga, don't fuck, don't, don't goddamn ride down on me and them whole ass niggas down there on the other wing fuck with them punks. You kicking it with them, but you gonna ride down on me. You know what I'm saying? I, I ain't down there. You know what I'm saying? I ain't down, you know I ain't down there with them punks. So if you come through and I'm jacking off, don't write me up. Don't fuck me over like that, man. Yeah, that's how I used to feel, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because you ain't gonna catch me down there on the other wing doing something I ain't supposed to be doing. So so they had wings for like punks and... Yeah, yeah. They but, but they also got punks and pop, just... Gen pop. Regular, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Just in there. They got, you know and the crazy about it is, female guards and punks at some sign is real close. They, you know, bitches always get the punks. You know, you know what I'm saying? It's like that in the world now. You know what I'm saying? So. so Man, they gonna get out there, they gonna talk to everybody business. Yep. You know, cause that's what punks do. Punks in there is the same as punks out here. They miss it. Right? Yeah. And we just gonna be honest, a lot of that, that community is kind of missing. So it's the same thing in there. You know what I'm saying? So that's why it's 2024. 
Oh, yeah, you can't say shit like that. Well, though. you can, but you got to live with the consequences. Hey, man, uh, you know, we got that disclaimer. Hey, man, we just being real here. So so, yeah. so we're going to say gays. Gays, gay. You know, say the you gays. got them gays doing their thing, you know. So, so, but you got a bunch. But, but here's the thing. You got a bunch of guys that's in there, supposed to be straight, but in there fucking with dudes. They punk. But then when they come out, they square business. Again. They square. They squared up again. They punks, man. Like hey, you know, it is what it is, man. Like wh- wh- why? And then they don't tell these women that they 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 done. Yeah. Been in there, tooting over or or, or tooting a guy over. Like, come on, man. That's that's, that's that's why you supposed to expose him. That's why books say, man. If I catch one of my partner, I'm exposing. You got to expose him. I ain't got to you know, be one of my partners. It's just somebody I'm locked up with and I see him. I'm you got to expose him. You I don't know care. He's big or small. Now, I'm going to tell you, when I when I got out, it was a nigga from our neighborhood that I seen down there fucking around. You know what I'm saying? And I told BB, too. I told my cousin. I said, hey, don't be fucking with that hey. nigga. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> don't fuck with don't that fuck nigga. Don't fuck with him. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because he was stocking like Rocky. You know what I'm saying? He been down there working out. I said, hey, don't fuck with him, BB. He was down there doing Hold wrong. Hold on, what you say? He's stocking know? like Rocky? Yeah. Yeah, he down there working. I said, he been doing wrong. Now, you can meet anybody from the neighborhood that ran across me in prison. I ain't got no bad, and I ain't never changed my name. You know what I'm saying? You know how niggas go down there and change up, be somebody different. Nigga, I was Jamel Crawford. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or, or Jay Crawford. You know, I, I ain't never had no extra name. I was Jay Crawford or Crawford. You know what I'm saying? So what I'm, you, be what, the same uh, I'm not following you. What you mean, change their name? Oh, you know what I mean, change their name. Nigga, like they don't want to be like who they supposed to be. Like, you go to another high school, you recreate yourself. Yeah, they recreating their goddamn self. Yeah. Hell yeah. What you, what you got to say, uh, uh, B? Man, that was one of the real reasons why I, I didn't want to go down there. Where the hoes at? They had college, <laughs> nigga. Shit, that I'm going to go to college. <laughs> well, you, yeah, they got me fucked up. I don't want to be around them. I just me. I was just, I couldn't get in no trouble, man. Fuck that. I already know you. Cause I'm gonna be around okay. a lot of dudes. I don't want to be around a lot of dudes. Look, I want to most the, people where the women at. That just that though, just me. You know? Yeah, man. I wasn't looking at for a head. Be out day tripping. Day, man. I you know, tripped out. Be I wasn't. It's all right. It's all right. I ain't tripping on you. I'm just yeah, saying. I'm for the day. If tomorrow come, come. Yeah, you know what I'm That's how you. That scared straight got me straight. You see? You see how I'm acting? That scared straight got me like that. Goddamn. Still to this day. You want to still a bubble gum, huh? Man, listen, man. I ain't been no trouble. I ain't never been in no trouble, and I ain't gonna get in no trouble. I ain't gonna kill nothing, let nothing die. <laughs> Do you hear me? <laughs> yeah. None of that. Shit, man. None of Listen, that. Hey, hey, nigga could call me square if they want. I don't give a damn. Hey, you know you what I'm talking about? <laughs> nigga, I want to be square. I'm glad I'm square. right. Hey, square is hip to be square. She. Yeah, you remember that? So, though? so, so, so nigga, I had, a, so I had another shit. one. I had another one of my partners. They got locked up when we was in school. It was, it was senior year. I had like two or three months before graduation, and a group of these guys decide to go rob a Popeyes. Oh, um, Shamu and them, Big Wheel. Big Wheel them. Big Wheel and them. Big Wheel them went and robbed his Popeyes. And Jose, little brother. And, Ho- and, and Miguel, Jose. The only mix in that school. Yeah, and, uh, school. and uh, my partner, my nigga, I wish he was there, I know, but I know he's in, uh, he, he drives trucks now in Utah. He come back and forth. Jay, Jay Hunter. Oh, Big James Hunter. Big James Hunter. Yeah. That's that's my nigga. Yeah. So Jay got out. Jay did ten years. Yeah. After all that shit. He did ten years. And when Jay got out, me and Jay started working out. You know, yeah. Jay Jay stayed working out. Stay he's still he's on still that. he's still working yeah, out. Yeah. So one day we were just sitting, we was just talking about it. And he said, Man, a lot of times I sat in that prison and I thought about y'all. And I should have stayed hanging with y'all. Y'all, y'all did the square shit and all that. Damn right. Y'all went into this robbing and doing all that. He say, man, I lost ten years of my life over some bullshit, over me trying to get fast money. Yeah, so a lot of times, a lot of times, that's what the brothers, the blacks, black guys, that's what they go to prison for. Yeah, trying, trying to get money. money. Yeah. And and when Jay told me that, I like, nigga, you see, we out here, we doing fine, <laughs> you know, yeah. you know. But he didn't, you know, you wasn't thinking of that. But look how long time. it took for us to be doing fine. Like, like, 
it, like, and I tell niggas, if if you would have put in, if I would have put in 19 years being a square, you know what I'm saying, I'd be great. You know what I mean? Damn right. But, you got to put in that time to be good. But back then, the nigga wanted it right then. Right then. You know man, what I'm, I'm saying? I'm, I'm going to tell y'all something, man. This And this real nigga shit. Say, man, I got uncles, man, and my grandmother and them, her sons and them, they was dying now, man. And i never forget, man. I was a young nigga. I was young. I was probably about seven, eight, man. Listen, I answered the phone, man, and it, it's something. Uh, this lady came on. You, it, could, you could collect call from. Yeah. And then... And I said, Granny, here go my uncles. You know, one of my uncles, two of them. Man, listen, she said, answer the phone. I, she got it. When I say, man, my grandmother, I was like a little rag doll in my grandmother's arms, man. She talking to her son on the phone. And my grandmother, this my baby. This will take care of me, man. I seen them tears coming down her eyes. You feel me, man? This really the shit, man. Yeah. I seen them tears come down my grandmother's eyes, man. She's squeezing the shit out of me, and I was like, I was wiping her tears off her face. When she got off that phone, I said, Granny, you ain't never got to worry about me. I ain't gonna hurt you like this. Yeah, I'm gonna, and so, like that. that's one of the reasons why, because of her, I was like, man, I'm, because I, I seen my uncle's him go down there, and I said, I got to make her proud. I can't make her heart hurt. My, my grandmother put up a house, all type of shit, man, you know what I'm saying, for my uncle's. Yeah, feel me. Yeah. They got Dennis out. Did back then too. You feel me? So all of them did. I, I I can I can understand where they coming from, but I also I I thank God that I I I didn't go down the road because I knew man I couldn't let these people down. You feel yeah. me? Yeah. Right. Even though a nigga was bad, I couldn't let this this lady down, man. You know? Yeah. What I, mean? I mean, we we've all did some mischievous shit. Yeah. That, that we didn't get caught doing and you know grateful to god that it didn't happen to us because when they say that thing that old that old saying god only gives you what you can bear yeah and god knows that guys like us couldn't go that we couldn't go down that route now i will say this here now watching my cousin and listening to them i always tell me i got you rich i always tell me hey man this ain't the life for you. Don't you don't want to do this shit. Don't be hanging out. Go play football, nah, man. Every time I try to sell dope, they'll take it. Every, try, every time I tried to rob, they nah, you ain't doing this. This is us. That wasn't that wasn't my lifestyle. When I when I got robbed, I I really realized, nah, this ain't this ain't my life here. This ain't what I want to do. So a lot of us got to go through certain things to understand that, nah, that ain't the role we, we supposed to leave. Hold on, Jamil. What you got to say, Rich? My thing is the problem I have with certain criminals is that they get their grandmother, their grandfather, he's ailing, and they come into the office, and they're going to put up all this money and stuff to get them out on bond. And they know they ain't going to And then we out. try to, you know, you can't tell a grandmother, no, you shouldn't bond him out. Let him stay in there, get, get his time built up in case he has to go. Then they get out. They know the only address they got is their grandmother. Then they don't show up. And when them white boys from the task force come, they don't care three, about four o'clock in the morning, your grandmother in sleep, and they, they, don't even they care. come in there through a flashbang and snatch the cover off your grandmother, and you on the run, and they bring your grandmother out there, search the house, attack the whole house, and they going to come back. Yeah, I just never understood how you could do your grandmother like that. Just a good old boy. Hey, Remember that? <laughs> hey, and they do it. And they do she, it. I was part of it sometimes. I was part yeah. of it a couple she, times. I was back man. over there by uh, Super Skate. Back Carl. there subdivision. Yeah, but but you, when you when you talk about how they could do their grandmother like that, you know, one thing that I've noticed over time is, and, and I'm dealing with a woman right now, and 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 she she was calling me, calling me, calling me, and I'm dealing with her son. And finally, one time, I say to her, how old is he? And she say, he's 42 years old. And I say, and you still and you still calling me worried about it? He was a grown-ass man. You, you ain't never made him stand on his own two feet. Because every time he get in trouble, here you come. But you and so sometimes, and, I, and it's people been close to me, who I said, hey, leave that motherfucker in jail. But you can't outdo a mother's love. You, you, I, you I don't can't. Care. You can't. But nah, then you, you call you, that love, you, though. 
But well, then you call that love because my mother loved the hell out of me. But my mother beat my ass. Well, not, you know well, what I'm saying? And, 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 and with bullshit. When my mother told me, if you go to jail, I'm not coming, she meant that shit. She meant that shit. And, 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 and you know, I, I got somebody close to me now, family member. And when he go, he don't get visits because I'm not going to normalize that shit. Yeah, if you point. go, if that's if you in the game, then when it's time for you to man up and take your time, you take your time like a goddamn oh, man, yeah. and you don't expect yeah. me to come and visit you because I ain't never told you to go that route. Mm. Nah. And so sometimes when I see mothers and grandmothers, and and most of the time in our at least in our community, it's mama and it's grandma. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I've had I've had I've had mama sitting sitting in front of me, daddy sitting in front of me. And there's been times I done told mama, that boy's problem is you can't look at him and tell him when he's wrong. That's his yeah. problem. Because every goddamn thing he do is somebody else's fault. Yeah. They picking on your boy. Yeah. They picking on your boy. Uh, my your problem ain't do that. You, 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 exactly. Bullshit, Yo, you, you know, and nowadays you put, you put a video in front of him. Oh, and say, I say, before you start telling me all this bullshit, <laughs> why don't you look at what we got first? That's not, and then you say what you want to say. They but but a lot of times, a lot of times, it's mother, it's grandmother, which which we love our mother and grandmother. My mother's past, I love her to death. But in in the business I'm in, I see a lot of times they people not being held responsible and not yeah. and, and so you know it's something else. We talk about moms, we talk about dads being there, not being there. I think about a case I had about 20 years ago, man. And it, a, a boy got in trouble. He, he went and robbed. You talk about syrup. He, they were robbing pharmacies heavy back then. Oh, yeah. And, uh, Pawn shops and phones. And, and he got popped coming out the pharmacy. Let me tell you, syrup is heavy. All right? So if you got a goddamn big old bucket full of syrup, it's hard to run from the laws when you got that heavy shit. Yeah. And he didn't so, want to drop it, huh? And so, but in my mind, I'm thinking... It's just some syrup. He ain't that bad. His dad wasn't there. And so I had his mom, so I said, we're going to go to the judge for punishment. I had his mom come and his sister come. And mom was tired. Sister was tired. She worked two jobs. And I spent, explained all that to the judge. You know, they came down here for their boy. She working a job. Sister working two jobs. They tired. But he didn't have no role models. You know what I'm saying? So he doing what, what he figures he can do. I'll never forget. That judge looked at me and he said, Mr. Richardson, he said, you keep telling me he didn't have no role model. He said his sister's sitting right there tired because she worked all night. His mama tired because she worked all day. He had role models. They were his role models. Been. They ain't never been to prison. They ain't never been to prison. Yeah. So don't tell me he didn't have role models. Then he popped it with 14. Hmm. You know, but but that that question you ask, it's hard to say that's sometimes grandma's fault, but grandma don't have to put that house up. No, she don't. She don't have to. She don't have to. You but know, he, sometimes I wonder. Grandma scraped together five, six, ten thousand dollars, but if granddaughter needs a little extra money to go to a school function, is she gonna scrape up the money for that? Sometimes we give the money to the person who's the, getting in trouble the most. The worst, yeah. You yeah. know, sometimes yeah, yeah. that's the person who's getting all the attention in the family. He you know, need, and, and that's the most looking after. Yeah, but this is this is he needs the most looking. You, you, you okay? You gonna be all right? Yeah. I gotta take care I of him. Look out for him. He's and special. that's fucked up. But this is crazy. That's how they be saying. But thinking. this is the craziest thing. When you have the family come into your office, into the conference room, so. The attorney that I signed and investigate, like myself, I go out and do the leg work and all this here. The DA gives me a video. I look at the video, attorney tells me, take notes, give me the video. So when I get in there, you got the whole family in the conference room. Grandma at the, at the chair, two or three cousins that then went to jail. They doing jailhouse law, telling what he should get and what he shouldn't get. Yeah. And I don't believe he did it. So I put it up on the screen. And there he is, he comes right out the door and fires six rounds down the street and hit a man and kills him. They turn on me and tell me I'm a white man nigga because I went and found it. Yeah, exactly. It's, yeah, and, it's and, your fault. And it's from, my our, fault. from our position, man, that's a hard position to be in because the first thing I tell them in, uh, unless 
we can agree on certain truths. We can't make a good decision. Now, I tell a grandmama, you ain't about to do the time. He mm-hmm. listening to you because he just want to hear somebody say he going to get out of this gonna shit. going to get out of this shit. And what yeah. I'm telling you is he mm-hmm. ain't going to get out of this shit. <laughs> so what we need to be talking about is how to lessen his time. Yeah. yeah. You know, instead of this bullshit about thinking, you oh, know, something, yeah, I'm going to yeah, put it in yeah. God's hand. How many times I heard that? Yeah. I'm going to put it. I say, you know what? Every time what if God's on the side of the motherfucker you robbed? Right. You the yeah. one robbing? What if God's time, is, God's, God's plan for you is to go do some time for this shit you're doing in the street? Yeah. You need to go You ever go. thought about that? Need to you go, know, but go. It, but, but, it, but there are a lot of circumstances where it appears that, you know, we cut for that person who is causing the most trouble in the family. And, no, and, 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 and sometimes I'll talk to those brothers and sisters, especially like this guy, 40-something. His sisters have cut him loose. Yeah. And they'll say, we're telling our mama to cut him loose because the stress is killing, killing her. her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean killing her. Literally. But she won't Bad do it. Heart. But that's she won't boy. do it. That's, that's, her, that's boy. her boy. That's her that's boy. Her boy. So, and he knows that. So he manipulates that situation to... Keep getting this, keep getting that. Give, give me a bond. You don't need a bond. Yeah, you don't You're getting ready to do some time. Why don't <laughs> you build up some time? Get me a bond. You know, so so mama trying to get you to go for get it from a hundred thousand to fifty thousand. Shit, you can't make it if it's twenty five thousand. What we need to be worried about is what the case is gonna be. Yeah. Not bond, but what's the case gonna be? But sometimes it's hard to get through to them. Yeah. You know, yeah. sometimes it's hard to get through. So, so before before we move on, cause we're gonna, it's something that I want to ask. I want to ask them, cause we have had some success stories. We're gonna talk about those. I, and I know, I know she's on the, on the panel today. You ain't saying nothing. Let, let's talk about I'm your. Gonna, let's talk I'm about enjoying the story. Let's so. talk about your time in jail. We, are we gonna light it up? Cause I let, mean, damn, it's like really heavy in the room. Let, let's we gotta talk light about, it up. What's let's, up, Billy Bob? What let's talk do? about your time in jail, Coco. <laughs> yo, 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 stitch you did. I stitch. <laughs> Come on, t- tell us about your time in so jail. We're going to lighten up the room, okay? Because this this is just oh, going to be a story. Don't and look, like I said, it wasn't my fault. Like, of course, that's what everybody said. I mean, that's what all of them say. Yeah, exactly. But this time, it really wasn't. So, I mean, I'm, I'm going to keep it short and brief. I was 21 at the time, and I was going to it. I'm, I'm going to keep names and places very discreet. I ain't going to say okay. name and pla- people and places, okay? Come on. Because I don't, you know, get anybody in trouble. So uh, I was going to a very particular spot that everybody used to go to back in the day, and close. say you can name the place. It's not Max's. Open Max's <laughs> definitely closed. Yeah. It definitely closed. Okay, so my cousin was the the one that used to act up all the time. Used to get in fights over there. So she was dating a cop that used to work there, and uh, they banned her from there. So I, I stopped. I started going without her, and then she said she wanted to come out, but we couldn't go there. So we went to the owner's other property on the same premises, but it's a different club, a teen club, eighteen and up. And uh, one of the officers, that's his friend, seen her and like radioed the other cops, and they came over and called her out. And um, I was wondering what was taking her so long. So I went outside, and he already got her hemmed up and everything. And then the other cop was like. I got to put you in handcuffs. I said, what did I do? So he said, mate, oh, I almost said his name. <laughs> he said, well, the cop said, his, the, the dude that's over everything said, I got I to gotta handcuff you. So I'm like, all right, whatever. I'm thinking like, okay, they're going to let me go. I'm thinking like, okay, uh, clearly they're going to let me go because I, I didn't do anything. So uh, no, I went right on to jail <laughs> with my ass. <laughs> I don't even know what the charge was because I mean I was 21 and I didn't even know I was so oblivious to that kind of stuff. I never thought I would. So ever. you got a misdemeanor? No, it mean it's not even on my record, so I don't even know what it is. Oh, yes, it what is. could they took me to jail for? I didn't. Oh. Did you get in the car? Yeah, I was in a I was in handcuffs and, and went in the police the car and went to jail. Yeah, uh, you okay. in the system. So so you in the system so for I'm something? A jailbird now, damn. So, so you in the Yes. So you're in the system for something. So I went to Macau jail, so that really shouldn't count, because that's not the real jail. That is the jail. That's where they take you. Did you, did you ever have to go to court? Jail, jail. It was bars and everything, y'all. Did you ever have to go to court? No. I was, we, were gone. we were out of there in like four hours, five Yeah, hours. but people get out, and then sometimes they have to go to court. Oh, no, none huh. of that. We Last, have we got release. Huh? Uh-oh. She got an open warrant. 
Don't even go there. I ain't and no she all on, all, all, on the and all on the podcast. All on the podcast. She uh, gonna cry when she get to the call. They yeah. might run up in here any second. I'm a good person. I'm a stand up citizen. All on the, all good on the stage. I am. All the book. All the book. Have you got stopped since then? Have I? Yes, I've gotten tickets since then. Yeah, yeah. they they speeding gonna run. Always, it's always speeding. They gonna run in here, arrest her, <laughs> arrest us. They gonna have the SWAT team and everything. And then we gonna, gonna be like our cousin. <laughs> Y'all better write me. And we, y'all we gonna be like, it wasn't our fault. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna put some of my books. Yeah, we're gonna you. make sure, we're gonna make sure you don't. We're gonna make sure Big Brenda don't get a hold to you. <laughs> she had Big Brenda, small Brenda. She. <laughs> oh, oh, you you gonna be you gonna be lunching now? Oh my god! Don't even listen. <laughs> like he said, I watched. I didn't you know watch she Scared Straight. I didn't watch Scared Straight, but back in the day, you know, the talk shows, Jenny Jones and all that, they used to have the Scared Straight segment on their show. And that what used to scare me. Seeing the kids, you know, well, they would go to the jails and, like, they they talk to the criminals or whatever, or they'll scare straight them to not do anything, whatever. So I'm like, I would never. I do not want to be a part of that. I don't like, like I said last time, I, I don't like green eggs and ham. You don't, like ca- you don't catch there. a Fleece Johnson in there. <laughs> I don't like them anywhere. Yeah, I remember Free Johnson. Booty. All yeah. I cared about in prison yeah. was booty. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> I got to have it. I booty got warrior. Have it. Booty I warrior. Booty <laughs> warrior. Booty you know, warrior. but you talk yeah. about you talk about scared straight though, but yeah. but people in the game, they don't never really think they're gonna end up. Oh. You know, you know what I'm saying? They don't never really saying, think they're gonna think end now. up getting caught or yeah. going to prison. You know, no, I'm okay. so, I think about the future. So, so here's the thing about all of this. So, so y'all both went in, got out. You're part of society again. What's some success stories now? What What is it that you're doing now to be to be a part of society and, and continue on with your life and not wanting to go go back? Because I'm gonna say this before I let before I let you speak. Now, some of the guys that that supposedly came on, they they have great success stories. My boy Derek, uh, who got locked up in Nevada, he he owns a trucking company now. He's he's doing trucking. Like I say, my boy Jay Hunter, he's out in Utah. He he does trucking. So I I know I have a I have another cousin who's locked up for many years that couldn't make it. Uh, he works in oil and gas now. And he's a uh, what is he a, a, safety. a safety? He in uh, Tennessee right now. Yeah, no, I thought it was a uh, Kentucky. He in, he in Kentucky, yeah. Kentucky. Oh, he's going to Kentucky. No, he in Kentucky. He in Kentucky. He work so he travels, yeah. working, and he's been locked up for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's that's been success tourists of a lot a lot of guys that. Yeah. You got you got to not want to go back. Guys. Yeah. 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 yeah Cause it's easy to go back. You know what I'm saying? It's easy to go back, but man, you gotta not want to go back. So, man. so Jamil, tell tell us what you're doing now. Tell us about your business. All right, man. What I do, man, I cut grass and haul trash and turn it all into cash. Just that easy. All I'm gonna do is cut some grass and haul some trash. And, and I do a little bit of everything in between. I might trim a tree. You know what I'm saying? I, I do a little demo work. I tear shit up. But all the things I do, it doesn't take anything to do it except a will and a want to do it. You know what I mean? And, and it's great. So, so when I got out, like I say, man, I needed some right now money. And cutting grass afforded me some right now money. And I ended up, I met a guy, an old man. I met an old man. You know what I'm saying? I met an old man. And, and the old man put me right up in the mix. He used to cut grass. And he gave me the cutting grass. He gave me his spiel on cutting grass. And when he, once he gave it to me, I was like, man, that sounds like all right. You know, that could be all right. And so I ended up getting with him, cutting grass. And man, I ain't never stopped cutting grass. And I ended up hauling trash in, in the mix of it. Because like I'm saying, if you cutting people grass, I'm cutting empty lots and fields and just maintaining people property. And so in maintaining people property around Houston, you have a lot of illegal dumping going on. And so if, if, I, if I'm cutting your lot and somebody puts some trash on it, you, you know, you might ask me to get it up. You know what I'm saying? And so. I'm going to charge you to get it up. And so that's how I ended up getting in the hall in the trash because it fell into cutting grass, you know what I mean? And the old man that I met, his name David Scruggs, by the way, his name Mr. D. 
the old man that I met, you know, he was just an old man cutting grass, but you never know who, who people is, you know what I mean? You never know who people is until you get to meet them. And so he just looked like an average, everyday, raggedy ass old man. But this old man used to own a McDonald's. You know what I mean? He used to own the McDonald's. So he had McDonald's. You know what I mean? He had a trucking company. He used to own McDonald's. He did all that shit. He say, man, after doing all this shit, I done had my own McDonald's. You know what I mean? And, and that was big back in the day, having a McDonald's for a black man. You know what I mean? And that was some big shit. And, and so he was like, man, after doing all that, cutting grass is the best thing I done ran across. Mm -hmm. He said, I done had a trucking company. I done did the McDonald's. He say, man, but cutting grass is by far the best thing I've run across. He say, because you don't got no overhead. He say, you can take one gallon of gas and make three or $400. And a gallon of gas costs $3. You know, he say, you can't beat that, 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 that you know, the, the formula. You can't beat the formula on, on just money alone. And so once he explaining this shit to me, I'm like, all right, you know, it's not all right, you know what I'm saying? You make $400 off 300, you know, cause I'm a hustler. And, and so that formula sounded good, you know what I'm saying? It's pretty good. That's better than dope. If you know dope, that's better than dope. You know, if you buy an ounce and flip it, woo woo, you don't get these returns right here on grass. And so he was like, man, if you ever get a lawnmower and want to cut some grass, you let me know. You know what I'm saying? He said, I got enough grass for you to cut every day. And I was like, what? He said, man, I cut grass every day of the week. I got more than enough grass. I'll share some with you. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? He said, I'll share some with you. I, all right, all right. And that was about a year or so go by, and I ended up running across the lumb, or that motherfucker fell in my lap. Yeah. Fell in my lap, man. I'm talking about, and I don't know nothing about no big lawnmowers, but it was a, a, a zero turn. I ain't never know nothing about no zero turn, mm -hmm. but it was a zero turn. I mean, I'm, I'm taking somebody to the pawn shop, and somebody was at the pawn shop trying to sell a zero turn. Pawn shop ain't want to buy it. You know what I'm saying? So he was sitting out there looking aggravated. I was like, man, what's up? You trying to sell it? I was like, what you want for it? He was like, man, I'll take whatever for it. Man, I just need some money. So I, I ain't know nothing about it. I called my kinfo. I called Eddie. I yeah. called Big Eddie. Hey, Eddie, man, what's up with this number? Mode? He said, let me see it. And I showed it to him. And um, he was like, man, I ain't got no money. Call Big Joe. So um, I called Big Joe. Um, I'm like, Big Joe, man, what's up? He was like, let me see it. Oh yeah, you win, nigga, get that. He said, I want that, I'm coming to get it. It was a good love, it was a Kubota. Or something, you know what I'm saying, With the orange one. It was the orange one. And um, he was like, I, I want it, I'm come get it. So I was like, man, this is a good mo. He was like, yeah. I said, I'm gonna go half with you on the motherfucker then. You know what I'm saying, dude wanted 600. I said, I'm gonna go half with you on it. So for $600, we get in the mix. I said, now what we gonna do with it? You know what I'm saying? I said, well, I know that old man. You know what I'm saying? I remember that old man who was cutting that grass. And I said, man, I'm gonna call that old man. My daddy got his number. So I got his number from my daddy. And I was like, man, I'm gonna call this old man. Y'all, he said he got some grass. You know what I'm saying? And sure enough, that old motherfucker had grass for every day. Mm -hmm. I ain't stopped cutting grass yet, man. And, and look, and so in the mix of cutting grass, we hauling trash. You know what I'm saying? Cause he do everything, you know what I mean? So he started hauling trash. He hauling for her. I got out right with Hurricane Harvey. Um, right, right, with Harvey. So he hauling trash with Harvey. You know what I'm saying? With, D, with with FEMA and shit like that. So he got a big ass trailer and shit. I'm like, man, what you doing? That's fifteen hundred dollars a load. Oh yeah. You yeah. know I don't know nothing about that at first yeah. though, huh? That's and so I'm like, man, what you doing? And he was like, man, I'm hauling trash. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, what? He was like, yeah, I'm hauling trash. And so he giving me the game on that shit. I was like, all right. And so I'm cutting grass with it. And so he was like, how much money do you want to make extra a month? I say, man, I need about 25 extra hundred a month. You know what I'm saying? I, I take about 2,000 a month. He was like, all right, come on. He was like, you ready to cut? I was like, all right, come on. We ride around third ward, he point. All right, cut that, cut that, cut that. He said, you writing all this down, Rob? I'm like, yes, sir, yes, sir. Cut that, now cut that, cut. He give me about 20 lots. He said, now cut them every two weeks. Send me a picture of them every two weeks and I'm gonna pay you. So that's how I got started, you know what I'm saying? Real. Every that's two real. weeks. Just, and, and man, I ain't stopped cutting grass since. And, and so I'm hustling, cutting grass. He was like, God damn, Crawford, I ain't never seen nobody cut grass like you. You know, because I don't know shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm fresh out of prison. You got a little Mexican in you. Yeah. Cut down the line. I'm like, what's the Mexican? <laughs> yeah, yeah. All you I got a little Mexican, Mexican in you. I'm rolling, you know what I'm saying? Hey, man, why you bullshitting? The Mexicans, hey, hey, shout out to the Mexicans. 
Cause y'all ain't be cutting shit out that grass. Act like y'all don't know y'all be, be making that bread. Cause they be stanging me. For, hey man, they be stanging me for my grass and mine. Making that bread. Ooh, and I got a lawnmower. I'm, it's twenty twenty four. Man, listen, lazy to the I got the lawnmower, but nah, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm just teasing y'all, man. But it is yeah. twenty twenty four. Hey, so look, man, let me finish telling y'all. So I'm cutting this grass, this old man, right now. This doing the corona, you know, after Harvey came Corona. Right. So Corona slowing everything down, except the fucking grass. Grass, that's right. Except the fucking grass, you know what I'm saying? The city still popping niggas with them yellow signs. Yeah. yeah, the grass still growing, so Mr. D phone stay growing, stay blowing up. Now, the city of Houston still got trash to pick up from Harvey, because oh, yeah. people homes got flooded right there in your neighborhood, in your yeah. neighborhood, yeah. mind it. People got shit everywhere. So um, he like Crawford. Man, you need to get a trailer, man, so we can pick up some trash. And so Mr. D had retired. He's like, Crawford, I'm finna get out the way. You can cut all the grass. Wow. So what I do, I, he got out the way. I just give him 20% of the invoices. You know what I mean? So Jamel. That's real. Did you did you hire somebody to help you? Yes. All I hire is niggas like me. You know what I'm saying? Niggas who need a second chance. That's if, real. If That's real right chance, there. It, it like, I done, I done seen people coming out of prison that I know. Man, what's up, Jay Crawford? Man, what you doing? You know, man, I'm cutting grass. You know, man, come on, I'm gonna pick you up. You know what I'm saying? Like they might, they stand at the um Texas house off two off, off um by Old Road by the landfill. Hey man, I'll get to the transit center. I'm gonna pick you up at the transit center. You know, I, and I'm just trying to give a nigga a shot. All That's I can weird. pay him is what, and I tell him, hey nigga, all I can pay you is what we make. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> You can't be bullshitting me. I ain't rich, nigga. You know, yeah. I can't just pay you. I'm going to pay you what we make. So we got to go out here and get it. You know, it, I got the grass for us to cut, but you got to want to cut it with me. You know what I mean? And so, and so, Mr. D said, Crawford, what you going to do, man? Um, uh, all right. And so, Mr. D cutting grass and um, hauling trash, right? And so, um, he left and went to Georgia. When he gets to Georgia, he got a brother in law, got one of these big ass trailers with a grappler on it. Now, I don't know nothing about this. I'm, I'm, I'm giving y'all the fast version because we're on the time. And so, Mr. D had retired, went to Georgia, left me with the black book, right? Um, he get down there, his brother-in-law got a big ass trailer that they pick up trash with with a grappler on it. He got some contacts in DRC that he was picking up trash with. He sent a man a picture of the trailer. Hey man, can I do anything with this? And the man tell him, yeah, get down here to Houston. We picking up heavy trash off to, with, with the city of Houston. He said, get down here. I'm going to pay you nine fifty a day. You know what I'm saying? So Mr. D, get down there. He picking up trash. And you know who he called. He called his boy Crawford. What you going to do? Now I'm cutting all the grass. Now I got too much grass to cut. I can't pick up, do the trash and do this shit. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm overrunning with grass. Because Mr. D ain't cutting no more grass. You know what I'm saying? And so um, he said, man, you got to get a trailer. I'm making nine fifty a day. I said, shit, I got to get a trailer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he making nine fifty a day. And, and so I'm looking to see, I'm on the internet. Every night I'm on Facebook Marketplace. Man, I got to get something like he got. But it take a CDL license to do what he doing. I ain't got no CDL license, you know what I mean? I just got my regular license, you know? And so um, I'm looking, I'm looking. And this going through the PPP shit, right? Now I'm my own business. I got my DBA in 2017 right after Harvey. You know what I'm saying? I got it. In September the fifth, right after Harvey, I got my DBA. You know, at, um, for, um, on point unlimited. That was what I named because I'm always on point and I'm unlimited. I ain't no telling what I might do. I can do anything. You know what I'm saying? I can do anything. I try anything, and it's gonna be legal because I'm a business. You know what I mean? And so I, I do my business, and, and I'm trying to do the PPE, but I can't because I don't know anything about the system. So I ain't getting no PPP action, but I got. $30,000, I got a $30,000 grant. You know what I'm saying? I got a $30,000 grant. And Mr. D, what you gonna do with it, Crawford? What you gonna do? You gotta get some equipment. I say, man, Mr. D, I'm trying to find something, man. I'm looking every night. I found the truck on the internet in Arkansas. I say, miss, it cost it $42,000. I still had my 30, I ain't touched none of my 30. I'm living off the grass. I'm eating off the grass every, every month. You know what I mean? So I got my 30 and I got 12,000 saved up. I go to Arkansas and buy this grapple truck. It's a, um, it's a, it's a dump truck with an arm on it. Like, you know how the yeah. city of Houston do the grapple? So I go down there, I buy that motherfucker. I drive it back. I get my homeboy, 
um, my little partner, the Titus, he followed me that we go in the rental car. I'm like, nigga, I'm finna go see. You know what I'm saying? I got a thirty thousand dollar cashier check, and I got twelve five cash. I give my poem boy. I say, here, you take half of the money. I'm gonna take half because I don't want to get stopped with over ten thousand dollars. Cause I, you know, I'm a fella. You know what I'm saying? I'm, you know, so I'm like, you take half. I'm gonna take half. You know, I don't want them laws to take it from me. You know, cause I ain't got no proof yeah. that I can have this kind of money yeah. on. You know what I'm saying? So we go to Arkansas. I, 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 the dude showed me the truck. I said, man, I want it. It's an automatic, cause I don't know how to do no stick shift. You know, I drive back down here to Houston. I got that truck December the twenty set first. I went down there on the Monday, December the twenty first, nigga. Mr. D had me working, picking up trash that Wednesday. I got back Tuesday, right? He said, let me see it, Crawford. Uh, here it is, Mr. D. Well, how to work it, man? I said, well, I don't know, Mr. D. I just got it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and he said, well, come on, let's figure it out. Wednesday, I was getting placard in, you know, where they um, weigh you up and shit. I'm getting pla I ain't even got this bitch registered, nigga. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got my CDL. I ain't got it registered. Nigga, I ain't got nothing. I just came from Arkansas. I got a bill to sell. I got a bill to sell, that's it. He's like, man, don't worry about it, Crawford. This is Mr. D. He, he sent me something. Oh, Crawford, don't worry about that. They ain't gonna mess with you. You picking up trash. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm like, shit, fuck it, all right. You know what I'm saying? I'll try it. 950 a day, I gotta try it. That's a thousand dollars a day. I gotta try it, you know what I'm saying? And so he give me placket up with DRC, the disaster relief. They, they ride around with them big black trucks. Yeah. So I got my truck. Mr. D get me on, I'm hauling trash Wednesday. We working one on, one off. So I'm on, you know what I'm saying? And I ain't got no CDL or nothing. I'm just running, praying. You know what I'm saying? I'm running and praying. And, uh, but I never did get stopped. I, I, I rolled like the first six months until I got my CDL license. But I, I started going to try and get them, you know what I'm saying? And, and so shit, I was rolling. And, and one thing led to another. They like, hey man, can you get another truck? Uh, the winter storm, you remember the ice storm, like yeah. in 21? Man, because, and, and I got my business certified with the city of Houston because Mr. D is a veteran. He was in the um, military. So he telling me, Crawford, you got to get certified, Crawford. Well, what's that, Mr. D? He said, you got to get a, you got to be a minority business enterprise. So I was like, well, how you do it? He was like, you go on the city of Houston website. Now I don't know nothing about computers. You know what I'm saying? Because I missed that shit. So I'm trying to figure it out and I'm stuck. You know, I got my mama helping me and shit. So I get my business. I end up getting certified. It took me a while, though. I got certified. Somebody called me out the blue. Hey, Mr. Crawford, we see your business on this website. Because once you get certified, you're on the little website and shit. Hey, we see your business. We want to see um, if you want to pick up some trash with this winter ice storm. We're going to pay you X amount of dollars a day for how many trucks you can get. I was like, what? All right. So I ain't got number one truck. So I get to call the niggas. Hey. Hey, man, you want to get a grapple truck? You know what I'm saying? I, I talked my homeboy to quitting his job getting the grapple truck. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, nigga, I don't know how much this shit, how long, but I can get you $1,000 a day right now. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how long I can get it, but I can get it right now. So they going to pay me for every truck I get. I get everybody I know. Come on, man, come on. And so I get like three trucks, so I'm getting paid off that, right? And, um, and, and that was just it. Then when that shut down, the city of Houston picked back up. You know what I mean? And the lady said, hey, man, can you get some more trucks? And I was like, shit, hell yeah, I can get some more. You know what I'm saying? So I got my homeboy to get another truck. I found somebody else. Hey, man, get a truck. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm just getting people to get trucks. And I was like, and we run it. You know what I'm saying? We run it. And, and, and so, and that's just what I've been doing. Nonstop. Hauling the trash. So, and I'm going to tell you, and it get better. It get better. Because now the bid come up. Mr. D like, man, hey, Crawford, we need to put in this bid you know, to, to pick up the trash for the city. And I'm like, all right, I want to do that. So I don't know nothing but what Mr. D tell me, you know what I mean? So I'm like, all right, I want to do that. And how I do it, Mr. D, he said, well, you got to go on the website. What he really doing is pimping me. You know what I'm saying? He want me to do everything because I'm the youngster. <laughs> he want me to do everything that he really want to do. But I ain't fucked up about it because we all going to get paid. You know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to do it. So I get everything he tell me to do, I do it. And um, I shoot for the bid for the um, heavy trash, I don't get it. But guess what happened? They called me. Hey man, we wanna know why nobody put in for this bid and why nobody qualify for it. You know what I'm saying? Me, I'm a talker, and I say, yeah. She say, would you mind talking to the director of Solid Waste? You know what I'm saying about it? I say, well no, I ain't got no problem with talking to the director. And so now I'm on the phone with the director of the Solid Waste Management Department with the city. 
You know what I'm saying? Just a regular old nigga. I'm on the phone with the director. And they want to know why ain't nobody get the contract. And so I give, I tell it. And they and I ended up getting six. You know what I'm saying? They was like, well, we're going to let you. How many trucks can you get? You know, they. I'm always going to say, well, how many you need? Uh, how many? Like, man, we'll do eight. So I said, all right, I got eight. You know what I'm saying? Now, I ain't got eight, but I'm finna find eight. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, because I'm finna get, they gonna let me pick my number. They let me pick my number for the trash. You know what I mean? So I got eight units on now. And my homeboy got eight units. Oh, so it's like we got eight trucks. You know what I mean? And I ain't got nothing but one. You know what I'm saying? But I'm getting people, hey, I got Eddie. Hey, Eddie, come on. You know what I'm saying? Get a yeah. trailer. You know, so we rocking trailers and shit, you know, on the big, big trailer. And so that's what I've been doing, but I still cut grass. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I still cut grass because when the trash stops, the grass ain't gonna never stop. You nah. know what I'm saying? So I still cut grass, I haul trash, and I got, a bu- I got a bunch of trucks now, you know what I'm saying, a bunch of trailers that I cut grass and haul trash with. So if you ever need some grass or uh, trash, please fuck with me because I cut grass and haul trash in a major way. Yeah, that's I, all right. That's hey, all right. Oh, on point unlimited LLC. There you, know you go. Man. Unlimited. Uh, man, I ain't so. got no IG because I don't know nothing about the computer hey, shit. There you, you know go. What she definitely is IG next to you. Hey, man, so. uh, my phone, man, I'm, I'm Jay Crawford. I, I'm on Facebook, Jamel Crawford, you know what I mean? But I, I, I think I missed the on point. Uh, on point unlimited. My phone number 281-352-3730. We cut grass and haul trash, and we going to turn it all into cash, man. You get at it. Yeah, that is right there, man. That is. Hey, hey. I'm going to tell y'all, right now, man, I'm cleaning up the neighborhood. I be picking up trash in, because we picking up illegal dumping. Because that was the big thing, the illegal trash that they be dumping. So they was like, hey, man, we need somebody to do it. I was like, shit, I'll do it. I'm going to give a fuck because it's my neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? So let me yeah. pick it up. And sure enough, they let us pick it up. Man. So man, so so that's one of the success stories we wanted to talk about, man. Uh but I know you're doing your thing with the host getting the whole CDL thing, trying to get you, get trying to get that going and all that, which is is coming up for you. Man. Hope you work. It, it's my boy. it's my boy. it's been a long ride for for men like like him. Like yeah. these like these guys. It's, it's, 40 year, about, what, about 40 year ride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been together forever, you know. I know I came in at least by the first, second grade. With yeah, niggas. it's been a long, it's been a long, a long ride for y'all. All the time that y'all put in, that y'all gave the state of Texas. Yeah, yeah. And and it's a blessing to see you guys out, and other guys who were were in you guys' shoes. Man, um, all I can say to the youngsters, and I, I want everybody to say something. We for to wrap it up. Say something real quick to the youngsters about not going down the road that a lot of them are facing because they build these jails and they build these prisons just, just for, for us. us. Just for us. Just for hey. us. And, and, here's a, and here's the thing about it. Whenever you do In Texas, know. Texas probably have the most prisons, right? Am yeah. I right? Yeah. yeah. We do. At least 114. Texas yeah, have more prisons yeah. in the other states except China. And, and they stated yeah, building yeah. more prisons. And, and they stated building more prisons in Texas. So they making these houses for you little niggas out there that don't want to do right. And you know what they say? Uh, and, and this and this is how they gauge how many prisons and the kind of prisons, uh, you know, to, to build. They go by the literacy rate in elementary school. Bet y'all ain't know that. They go by the literacy rate. If a if a student can't read, they if it's a young black student he can't read, they already count him in the penitentiary. If if you can't read by a certain grade level, they count you in the they got a bed for you. I'm, hey, so, it's just fact. It's so facts. so this is what I want to do for the wrap it up. Uh a few seconds, everybody going around the room, say something about say something. Say something real quick about to the youngsters, and, and, and you know, let them know about hey, that life ain't what you think it is. You you gonna lose half your time, you know. Whatever it is you want to say, what's on your heart about what you went through, real quick. We just need it real quick. Time to wrap up. Um, all I can say, man, it ain't worth it losing value people that you say you love because you're not doing time by yourself. 
And I just like this shit say this one thing, one thing on the hard time I ever done. When I lost my grandfather, May the seventh, matter of fact, almost six years ago, 2018, when I got a lay in to see it, and the chaplain told me I lost my grandfather. And these two guys that really know me, my cousin and what's the name? The grace of God, I got to see him. But I didn't I didn't go to bury so I seen him. And it hurt me because I I put it on myself. So if you say you love your mama, the people that are around you, mm-hmm. do right, man, because they 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 tear them up. So my thing right here, I'm gonna wrap it up really quickly. That I have a brother that is in the feds. So, and that's the only sibling I have. So, and I don't have a lot of family. So for me, what I tell you guys, if y'all thinking about doing something stupid, don't do it because damn, I can't even see my own brother. And that was my support system. So think about your family. Think about who, people who love you and try try as much as you can. Just like this brother right here, there's opportunities if you want them. If you want them and you're willing to work hard or even try to find them, people are willing to help you. If you're a grinder with some other shit that you ain't supposed to be doing, you can be a grinder with some shit that you're supposed to be doing and make some money with it and be accomplished in life. So don't do it. It ain't worth it. Come on. Man, I want to tell the youngsters, man, hey, it ain't worth it. Like Booker saying, you ain't going to be doing the time by yourself. You're going to have your mama crying, your grandma putting up her highs, man. Hey, man, it ain't worth it. It's too easy to do the right thing and because it, it, it's too easy to get money out here. It's on the ground. It's laying on the ground. You just got to want to go get it. It's money everywhere. And they say, man, money don't grow on trees. Yeah, it do if you got a chainsaw. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it do. it's money everywhere, man. There's no excuse not to do the right thing. But, you know, everybody ain't gonna do the right thing. But man, every day, man, you got a chance and a choice, man, make the right one. You know what I'm saying? Make the right one. All right, Lee, you got anything, son? Yeah, man, I just wanna, you know, reiterate what they were saying. Number one, there are opportunities and options out there. And a lot of young fellas, they don't, they don't believe that or they don't see that there are some opportunities and options. And sometimes you might have to reach out to somebody who can who can guide you the right way. Like Jamel met a guy who he called old, old man, but he might have met that man 18 years ago or 20 years ago if you're willing to open up your ears and listen and maybe follow somebody's advice. But it's only one way that street game is going to go. You know, it ain't many people. It ain't, you, you, you can't look around and see people who escape that, that route. So it's some opportunities out there. And uh, it's, some, it's some ways to do it as long as you can be your own person. And don't let other people around, around you sway you into doing things that you know you don't have no business doing. Right on, right on. Joe? Yeah, I just wanted to say, when Jamel said couldn't nobody tell him nothing, he went to jail. But when he said he listened to Mr. D, he made a whole lot of money. Right on. Kind of how. What I want to say is, it's easy to get in trouble, and it's hard, hard to, get to get out of, out of the court system. And I'm going to get this here to Jamel, heads up. You need to head to Montgomery County, Conroe, because it's flooded over there today. Yeah. You're going to have to breathe. That, the weather channel is your money channel. I'll be watching. I'll be watching, too. Yeah. Man. Get your contract with FEMA. Yeah. Yeah. So, so once again, man, uh, uh, Brady. Brady Bob, come on, man. Man, it's just, it was this guy by the name of Willie Lynch. Yes, sir. I Speak know about on it, huh? Know about Speak on, on him Hey, him how to him. break a slave. When I listen to this, I'm a school teacher, and I look at the, the, the system of the school system of it. It's ran like the prison system. It's just another institution. I bet they eat fish on Friday, don't they? Yes, every Friday. Even in the military. Yes. So when you think about this guy that they, when slavery was abolished, they came up with a system to break a nigga. And they used the same content from Willie Lynch, how to break a nigga. Yeah. So kids, let me tell you something. They gonna break your ass. My mama and them and my, my father and them used to say, man, hey, if I don't get on your ass now, them white folks gonna come, come get you. See, so if you don't want them white folks to come get you and you're gonna be locked up and you got to do what they say, <clears throat> keep acting up. <laughs> keep acting up. <laughs> you gonna what? Learn. You gonna learn. That's Brady Ball. 
Okay, so here's the thing, man. We've had a we had a great panel, and I want to thank the guys for coming on. I want to thank everybody for being on this evening. Uh, I know we started a little late, kind of went over a little bit, but man, it, it this was needed, and a lot of people. We need to push this here, uh, and we need to get get more subscribers to subscribe to Big Stick Energy on YouTube and subscribe to Big Stick Big Stick Energy HTX um, uh, Instagram. So we can start pushing it out there more. This is really needed. We need more people. We're gonna have more dialogue like this here with with some more guys. Uh, maybe not for another few weeks or probably another few months. We're gonna come. We're gonna circle back around to it uh, with, with with more guys. But man, I want to thank everybody for being on this show. Uh, don't forget that uh, this is brought to you by Brock Brand. Go get your Brock Brand. Also, Quad Houston. The Den Cigar Lounge. Um, once again, if you, if it don't feel right, don't do it. That's right. Yeah, yeah. If it don't feel right, don't do it. Because uh, yeah. your life ain't worth losing all that time. These brothers lost oh, a lot of their time uh, behind bars, and that's where they want us to be because they're going to make money off your ass. That's how they make money off of you. Wake up. So, uh, so, so once again, I want to thank everybody. Thank the crew. We started a little late, but we 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 back on it. And uh, I appreciate everybody for doing what they doing, talking and talking to the guys, Booger, Jamil. Thank y'all, man. Thanks man, a lot thank for for, for, me out here, for, Papa, for doing this. Uh, I appreciate it. Thanks. All right. So, once again, this is Big Stick Energy. I got all the energy and the big stick, and we're gonna keep it going. See you next time when we come come back around next week. Gonna be on something else, y'all. Never know what I'm gonna bring up next week, but we'll be back to the regular scheduled program next week. All right, chill.